I'm Tim Daly. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Hello. Well, let's get back to it. Yeah, I heard that there was one small punch-up at the Eurovision Song Contest. Glitter everywhere. Hey, there was an inaugural conference of uh, swivel-eyed dinglings today. Did you hear about that? Oh, my God. An inaugural conference of a group promising to restore grassroots control to the Conservatives uh, and ensure that the party's MPs can never again impose their own leader. That took place today. The Conservative Democratic Organisation. Doesn't that sound great? No. <laughs> what is it with these stories and their little groups? <laughs> the Conservative Democratic Organisation gathered in Bournemouth uh, today. It's a Boris Johnson fan club. And who was absent? Boris Johnson. Where were you, Budge? Peppa Pig World. Pe Peppa Pig World. He loves it over there. The Conservative Democratic Organisation ga gathered in Bournemouth uh, today and insists that it is not a Boris Johnson revivalist group. It totally is a Boris Johnson revivalist group. They said its only purpose is to make the party more accountable to rank and file. You know, those bores who prop up the bar at the golf club. <laughs> those people. Nothing to do with the Mr. Blobby Lovin, they said. But almost every speaker lined up is a Mr. Blobby Lover. There's Pretty Patel. <coughs> Jacob Smug. My view. <laughs> And Nadine Doris. <laughs> Good grief, is it a conference or a circus? The Conservative Democratic Organisation itself emerged from anger at the way the former Prime Minister was removed by Tory MPs. Good grief, they're still on about that. Stop whining. He didn't get usurped. He wasn't upended by evil outside forces. He was so spectacularly unfit for office, even his own fawning party had to get rid of him. He's not in number 10 anymore because of the things he did. It's because of the things he did. But they would have you believe that, uh, you know, it's just a wokey, lefty, Remainer, Tory plot to oust him. No one takes responsibility for any of their actions anymore. Least of all this clown show that's been in power for the past 13 years, because a large number of them would be in jail right now if they did take responsibility. Ain't that right, Budge? I, I can't comment on that. Johnson's reported to have signed bottles of wine for a charity auction. Booze. But it didn't actually show up himself. Despite the organiser's tantalising promise of very special guests. <gasps> Ooh, was it Vladimir Putin? No, they've struck him off their invite list. Yeah, shame about that. So much money. Some allies suggest that Blobby still harbours hope of a comeback. Well, how about us poor dopes who pay taxes? Do we have a say in that? No. No. Earlier this week, he was spotted holding private talks in a private members club with his successor, Liz Truss. You remember Liz Truss, don't you? Only kept off the top spot as the worst Prime Minister of all time by the man that she was speaking to. Absolutely. Just a thought, the Private's, Private Members Club no doubt has fees. Has Bodger actually paid fees or was he on a freebie? I think we know the answer to that one, don't we? Um. Yes. And when he's not having chats with a woman so inept that she lost in a race with a lettuce... Bodger appears very busy with life well beyond Westminster, earning millions of pounds on the international speaking circuit and focusing on growing his family. Oh. Disgusting. What a thought. His family moved this week into their new £4 million nine-bedroom grade two listed home with a moat in Oxfordshire, according to friends. Of course, he's also working hard for his constituents in Uxbridge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Has he ever been there? Other than on a lightning photo shoot where he got chauffeured in and instantly chauffeured back out again as soon as the press had enough photos of him. Of him dressing up in somebody else's work clothes. 
How are these MPs actually um, continuing to take our money when they don't appear to do anything for it? I mean, they're just a bunch of part-timers. <sighs> David Campbell Bannerman is the former MEP who launched the Conservative Democratic Organisation. He said, Poor! He said many Tory members felt they had been gradually shut out on everything from candidate selections to policy. Well, I wonder why that might be. I mean, they're the ones who put the Liz Botton crazy in charge. They're the ones who still think the catastrophic clown show of another Boris Johnson premiership is what the country re needs right now. I think maybe they should sit down for a while with a cold compress on their foreheads. They seem to be overheating. David Campbell Bannerman is an, a former MEP, of course. Oh, no. Yeah. He launched Conservative Democratic Organisation. He said, What we rail against at the CDO... <laughs> as though they've been in existence for years. What we rail against at the Conservative Democratic Organisation is the contempt shown for the members. They're not stupid. They're good people whose voice should be listened to, he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the evidence points to the opposite of everything that that man just said. They do appear to be stupid and they should not be listened to on any subject. <laughs> He said a lot of members feel that all they seem to be good for at the moment is leaflets and fundraising. A lot of them are very active people. They've got other things they could be doing. Yeah, like shouting at foreigners or complaining that the people playing the 18th hole haven't tucked their shirts in. You know, important stuff like that they could be doing. All of that harumphing time they're losing. <laughs> They could be sitting, sitting around going <laughs> to each other. You know, no end of vital stuff they could be getting on with. And you'll be delighted to know that the evening in Bournemouth uh, ended in a dinner and dance. Uh, the menu were roast beef, or for the vegetarians, gammon, and smug led the dance. It was uh, like a stick insect having a fit. It's just the way he moves. Sexy! <laughs> 0345... 6060973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're a member of the Conservative Democratic Organization, call me up straight away. I'd like to have a chat. These are texts and emails and such from last night. Chris says, My local supermarket has put security tags on milk, and bread's gone up, and gas and electricity, uh, electricity prices. No wonder young adults are still in their childhood bedrooms. Pauline says, Tesco's Brussels sprouts, £1.50 a bag. Estimate, 10 sprouts. <laughs> huh. 10 sprouts, £1.50 a bag. So how much is that uh, per sprout? That should be on that exam that the, uh, the kids are whining about. Oh, it's so hard. Shut up. So let's see, £1.50 a bag, and there's 10 sprouts uh, in that bag. Any fool know this, it's, um, it's almost like, uh, like it's, it's almost 15p a sprout. <coughs> Near enough. Ryan says, stop making me laugh, I'm in hospital recovering from three hernia operations today and it's painful. Right, oh, Ryan. Jay says, laying in the dark, listening to your show reminds me of being a teen and listening to John Peel. Who'd have thunk it in this day and age of high-tech entertainment? I'm half expecting my mum to burst in and tell me to get to sleep as I've got an exam at nine. Oh, I can't go, go do my exams with a bugged up doze, bub. Course you can, Malcolm. Anybody, anybody remember that? If you don't remember it, then it might uh, sound as though I've just had a stroke. Dan says, fun fact, since privatisation, water companies have sucked out over £81 billion in uh, shareholder dividends. Yeah, well, every single privatised uh, national asset has had the same thing happen to it. I mean, look at the trains. Good grief. I have detailed files. But first, here is a call in um, Bushy, Michelle Marbell. Hi, Nick. Michelle. Um, hi, how are you doing? I'm great, mate. Good. Okay, so I want to talk about Martha the Millions, who got 
stopped by the police last Sunday. Uh, I don't think the visual that they did on Thursday night was enough to to say how hurt, upset. What kind of dogs were they? I am. What kind of what kind of dogs were they? Um, well, they're sort of on the pit bull sort of thing. Oh, but that, no, but no, I'm no, sorry, no, that doesn't no. make any difference. It, but they shouldn't, you, people shouldn't be allowed to have an animal that they could lose to in a fight. That's nuts. No, no, uh, hold on a minute. Not every, not every animal like that is Oh, dangerous. please, I have, I've heard so many people say, oh, they're lovely with kids. Yeah, they find them delicious. I need to, I need to talk because I, I need to... I need to say that the police should be accountable for what their actions... People who own dogs should be accountable for their actions. They should not be allowed to own a dog that is as dangerous as a wild animal. A cat's fine. Small dogs, okay. You aren't going to lose a fight to a small... to a Pekingese, uh, for instance. <laughs> as annoying as they may be. But those huge dogs, that, which are n nothing but teeth and muscle, people should not be allowed to own them. Loving. Oh, please, Michelle, do not be telling me that those dogs are loving and they're kind and they're so generous and warm and... Oh, it's just nonsense. A little switch goes off in their tiny doggy brains and they eat your face off. You're not letting me say what I want to say. Yeah, you're very upset. I get it. But those dogs should not have been in the possession of a person in the first place. And if those, if those are the same dogs that I saw, that some bloke on the tube... And he had the dogs on the seats. Well, that's a big no from me. No, 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 no. I mean, you can do that in your own home. I don't care. But not on the tube. Don't impose dogs on seats that people sit on that have nothing to do with those dogs. If you want to do it in your own home, fine. If you want to put the, your feet on the seats in your own home, that's okay. But don't impose that on us. All right. Listening to me. What? You're not listening to me. Well, what is it, Michelle? The, the thing is, those police should be uh, accountable for. The Jesus. owner should be no, accountable. No, 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 just be quiet for a second and listen, because I feel, I feel hurt. I know loads of people oh, feel hurt. Do me a favour. No, there's no, an, there's animals sorry. dying all over the world every second of the day, and those two are the ones that you get upset no, about. No. There's people dying all over the world. There's people starving to death. There's people dying in the, in the worst possible circumstances, Michelle. But you ignored all of that to call in about two devil dogs. They're not devil dogs. What, they kind, of, what, what kind of dog were they? The, okay. The, they were, they were, they were in, an enormous name. pile of muscle with teeth. <laughs> they, they, no, nobody has any business owning a dog like that. It is but true. It's absolute. Is what true. possible reason would you need? To, what possible reason would you need to own a dog that is about as dangerous as a no. lion? The, yeah, it's have absolutely no reason. Dangerous <laughs> animals should not be die. owned by people. End of story. Yes, they should. No, they should not. What, uh, did, you, did you just say that a dangerous animal should be owned by people? They walk around the streets. What? What do you want them to do? Just walk around the street? No, they should not be in people's ownership, dogs like that. Yes, they should. Why? Be because they are creatures, and, and they're living creatures, and it's only the, the people who uh, mistreat them, who beat them, who make them fight, are the ones yeah. that make them vicious. They are not born vicious. Don't be ridiculous, Michelle. Of course they are. That is the purpose no, for not. that is the purpose for those dogs. They are bred to be like that. I don't know the specific type. I just saw a picture of uh, a bloke who had two dogs sitting with their bottoms on the seat on the tube. Disgusting. And I thought, well, that's a big note from me. That's a huge red line from me. Dogs stay on the floor for a start. They don't go on the seats. And neither should anybody be allowed to have a pet that you could lose a fight with. That's insane. Th this is a too crowded island for people to be wandering around with essentially a bomb on a string. They took a life of innocent dogs who did nothing. Michelle, in the time that we've been talking, thousands of people have died of hunger in the Horn of Africa. 
and lots of animals have been abused and lots of animals have died and lots of animals okay, well, have been... Here, here's a good cruelty. idea. People should stop owning... First of all, if you're in an urban area, you shouldn't be allowed to, allowed to have a dog at all. I mean, I know that's uh, maybe a slightly controversial thing to say, but I don't believe that, that you should be able to have a dog. I mean, people live in flats and they have a dog the size of a small horse. How is that um, doing the dog a favour? We, th we imagine that we are um, kind to animals in this country, but we're not. We torture animals for our own amusement. I mean, you think a dog of that size it wants to be cooped up in a flat all day? Of course they blooming well don't, any more than a cat wants to be cooped up in a, in a building for, the, for its entire life. They want to get out there and roam. And a dog that's that huge, well, I don't know what its purpose is other than, other than killing stuff. I mean, you might as well take a, take a rifle for a walk. Anyway, Michelle, it's been a delight. Think about the people would be more important. 0345 6060 973, text 84850, email nick a at lbc.co.uk, and if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. This is LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973, tweet at LBC, text 84850. Anybody care what this guy thinks? No! <laughs> Sue emails, uh, those primary school kids who were stressed out because they found the SATs tests too hard might take some comfort from the fact that you can get a top job in government these days without, <laughs> without actually knowing anything. You're better informed than I am. I don't know anything. Yeah, I mean, look at that guy. He doesn't know anything. I don't know anything. Not one single thing. And he's done very well. No end of money. He doesn't know anything. I don't know anything. Not one thing. Dan says, since privatisation... Oh, no, I read that. The water companies have sucked out over £81 billion in shareholder dividends. Yeah. That's £81 billion that we could have used to... Uh, oh, gosh, I don't know. Fix the sewerage in our streams and on our beaches and in our rivers. Uh, we were talking about honey yesterday and... Um, uh, apparently, uh, I don't know, some uh, European uh, agency tested our honey and it's not honey. Honey... It's sugar, or has uh, has been um, uh, uh, in, not um, not inundated. It's been um, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? It's been um, uh, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Hold that for a second. Hold that for a second. Sorry, it, it, uh, honey has been um, abused by sugar. It's been infiltrated. It's diluted. Been diluted is not the right answer, but I'm going to go with that because otherwise I'll be uh, trying to think of that word for the rest of this show. <laughs> it has been um, infiltrated by sugar. Would be better. And Martin says, it's honey samples from supermarkets that are problematic. Buying from local bee beekeepers is generally okay. And David says, test for fake honey. Put a globule in a glass of water. If it's genuine honey, it'll sink to the bottom. If not, it will dissipate. Yeah, but what if it's honey mixed with sugar? I, somebody told me that you, you spread it on a bit of paper, and then you set fire to the paper, and if it burns, it's sugar, and if it doesn't, it's honey. Don't try this at home. Warning, warning. 0345 6060 973. Uh, let's talk about... Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> Started something now. Uh, Sandbatch. John, Sandbatch. Oh, hi. Batch. Batch. Sandbatch. Yeah, Sandbatch. Yeah, yeah. Sandbatch. Yeah. Batch without a T. <laughs> right. Batch. Mm, yeah. Bash. Um, batch, yeah. It's... Um... I was. I agree with everything you said about the Tories at the beginning of the program. Oh yeah, um, I definitely. I mean, I was watching them tonight on the news. They were having a sing along. Jacob Rees Mogg and oh. what's her name? The other one who was state secretary. Uh, uh, what are you talking about, Pretty Patel? Uh, no, uh, the other one. One of the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the, the one. The one who wants to send everybody off to Rwanda. Oh, like Cruella. That. Cruella, Cruella, yeah, yeah that's the, twist, the one, yeah. twisted sister, yeah, yeah, they're all there at, at the meeting singing "God Save the Queen." Of course they were, yeah, something, oh, something like were that. Going. Very tiny, mm. very tiny meeting, but they all the lot of crowd, cloud because they're on television being interviewed, and I think they were singing. I, I think they finished off with Deutschland Überall, <laughs> and there was a sale of 
and they can, somebody <laughs> shouts, you get your jack boot, jack boots yeah. on the way out. Yeah, they're saying, tomorrow belongs to me, or, or something like that, yeah. 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 All right, well spotted there, we'll John. See, I don't think we'll see any of them at the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah, no, probably not, no, not not their thing. It's got, it's got the word Euro in it. <laughs> That's uh, like um, garlic to a vampire, that is. All right, thanks a lot, John. Adulterated or impregnated is the correct answer. Yes. Well done, that man. Our honey has been impregnated with sugar. Isn't that awful? Disgusting. Ugh. People are eating that. Let's have, um... Snowdonia. Hello, Jane. Oh, hello, Nick Abbott. Jane. Hello. I have been a long-time stalker First time caller to you. Oh, yes. Um, anywho, I was I wanted to talk about the dogs. I have uh, four border collies. Mm. Yeah. Having said that, I do live on a farm. Right, lovely dogs. Very, very intelligent. They need a lot of exercise, apparently. Not that I know what I'm talking about, but, you know. Oh, mate, uh, we spent three grand on dog-proofing one of our fields so that we could exercise them properly without them escaping and mithering anyone else's sheep. Yeah. Well, now, do they, they, um, do they actually require work like that to, to you know, maintain um, good mental doggy health? Or can you just play with them? Because sheepdogs... Oh, I just play they... with them. Right, okay. I play with them. I mean, I've got, I've got a flock of Cameroon sheep, but they're an African breed, and they don't take well to dogs. Cameroon uh, sheep? Cameroon. Cameroon sheep. What kind of, yeah. um, right. Is that like a normal sheep? Well, like, they're if sheep. I, if, I, if I looked at it, would I think, oh, there's a sheep? No, you would probably think it looked more like a goat. <laughs> goats. Uh, but I also right. have goats. Ah, now, is it difficult to tell the two apart? Not at all. Like, if you've, okay. if you've, if you've had a skinful, Jane, and you wander out into one of your fields, do you um, often uh, mistake one for the other? Uh, no, I often have a skin for what I often walk out into one of my fields and I have never mistaken. Right, ne sheep. never done that, right, okay. Blues. Yeah. They all live together in perfect harmony. In perfect harmony. Yes, they do. Yeah. But not with the dogs. Not with the dogs. Dog, dogs are derived no. from wolves. And so they're pack animals as well, whereas sheep and goats are herd animals. It's a different thing, really. Yes. Well, they're stupid, aren't they? Sheep and goats are uh, mostly no, very, very goats stupid. are really far from stupid. Are they? Goats are pretty much as clever as a collie dog. No. Oh, yes. Could you get one to fetch I mean, a stick? My goat, no. Right? So I've got... <laughs> I've got Brittany, Beyonce, and Sir Tom Jones are that my goats. Oh, those are your goats. Okay, what do you call your dogs? I hesitate to ask. Uh, well, I've got Prince Laddie, mm. <sighs> Megan Barkle, right, and uh, Buzzy Bee, and Gethin Wolf. Now, these are all multi-syllable names. Do the, do the dogs actually understand those names, or do you shorten them for uh, their benefit? Of course. Right. So, Gethin, Meggy Moo. Buzzy Bee wow, and it, Laddie. It's extraordinary. The way you said that, it, uh, when you said Gethin, I, I actually did sit up straight. <laughs> well, I'm sure you did. Can I have a treat? <laughs> 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 uh, well, uh, well, if you behave very well, Nick, then yes, you can. Oh, bless you. Are you flirting with me? Um... Absolutely no. This is a, this is a purely um, dog and owner thing going on here. There's <laughs> don't read anything into it, Jane. Well, I try not to, but you know, I yeah. do. I, I I'm very very fond of you. I listen to you every weekend because wow. I keep farming hours, so I go to bed quite oh, early. Oh yeah. Well, it's it's probably way past your bedtime now. Well, it is. Yeah. Wake up. It's time so, to go to sleep. I just wanted to say that it was unfair that the police shot those poor dogs. Right. Well, I don't know why they did that. I wasn't there. I didn't see the videos, if there were such a, a thing. But those... There are videos. My husband's right. seen them, apparently. OK. Well, I haven't. I, I, yeah, I, so I don't know, but I, my, my um, belief is that nobody should, be a, mo nobody should be able to own a dog like that. 
Well, that is true, but one of them was only nine months old and it was tethered to the dead one. So how could it possibly have hurt anybody? I don't know, Jane. I wasn't there. I haven't seen it. I know, but I maintain that no one should be able to have an animal that they would lose to in a fight. That seems perfectly oh, well, reasonable would, to me. I would lose to my cows. I would lose to my pigs. I would certainly lose to the dogs. Yeah, but what are you saying? Yeah, like, but you so don't. No you don't wander. Now. You don't wander around the shops with a cow. <laughs> Cows are blooming dangerous. They man. are dangerous, yeah. Cows are very dangerous. People should um, respect cows. RP, like Aretha Franklin said, RPSETCP. Respect. <phone rings> hey, Jane, I've got to go. Thanks for that. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Is it on tape? It is. Uh, just past 10.30 on LBC, the news headlines with Tim Daly. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Uh, hello. 0345 6060 973. Fleet, Kirsty. Hello, Nick. I'm a first-time caller and I'm very excited. Kirsty. Um, you know the... Oh, hello, voice. Oh, hello. So, I've been going through your podcast for about eight months now, mm. trying to find what date it was that that call, I still haven't heard the whole call, <laughs> and I can't find it, and it's driving me mad. I mean, I'm loving it, don't yeah. get me wrong, I love listening to your podcast, but... I can't find it. Yes, um, I don't know when that was, but I do remember. Oh, how rude! Him, I, I do remember him calling. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, and, and then apparently he went, you had an argument with him, yeah. so you don't know. Well, hopefully, one of your lovely um, listeners Maybe. will. Maybe. Yeah. Will know. Um, okay, I bet I. Know, this is a message coming in from uh, next door. Do -do -do -do. I bet oh. I know. I think it was. Well, I'm, do we need to actually give his name? No. But when do you know when it was? No, I, I just know the man, the man's name. Okay, well that's no good. I don't care what his name was. No, I want to know when it was. Exactly, he is absolutely no help whatsoever, is he, Kirsty? Completely. Anyway, thank you for keeping me insane. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, Kirsty. Uh, cheers, Bye. my dear. Ta da! O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Yeah, it might sound as though he's uh, all uh, jovial. Oh, hello. But he, he actually wasn't. He was furious with me. I can't remember why. But he probably had good reason. <laughs> yeah, got no idea when that was. But if you do, let me know and I'll let Kirsty know. 0345 6060 973, Canada Water, Adele. Yes, how are you? Honestly, I go to bed with, well, not literally. Not literally, no. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. Yeah, no, let's not get carried away. Um, I need I need some advice. Yes. I've got five dogs. Five? Yeah. Do you live on a farm in Canada Water? Well, no. unless you, you... No, no, there is a farm in, in, in Canada Water, but I don't live on a farm. Do you I live... live in a maisonette. A maisonette <laughs> above the first floor? Upstairs and downstairs. Well, the ground floor? Yes. Right, so they've got a garden... Yes, they got a garden. What kind of dogs um, are they? Um, I got a golden retriever, mm. a Staffy. No, nope, see, Staffy, wrong, 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 wrong. <coughs> no, nope, they, they should not be allowed. What do you mean? But I, 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 I need your listener to give me some advice. The golden retriever. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a property owner, <laughs> and um, my golden retriever is um, sixteen. Yeah, 16 years old. Is that old? Yeah, he's 16. How, how old does a dog normally reach before it explodes? <laughs> I was... I've, I've, do, I've done some research. I do research for Gaston St. Thomas's Hospital. Oh, yeah. Uh, on and dogs, really? That's no, extraordinary. No, not for dogs, for oh. human beings. Gotcha. Not dogs. I don't know much. Um, and um, my, uh, um, I got a private vet... And um, what, for you, wouldn't a doctor be more appropriate? No, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very confusing call. Go ahead. 
uh, you're confused. I'm <gasps> not confused. Right. And um, my, my dog, um, the, the 16 year old golden retriever. 16 years old. According to the uh, information on my screen, 10 to 12 years is the average lifespan of a retriever. So um, it's uh, doing extremely well, unless it isn't. Um, he's got arthritis, and right. um, the dog, wa- um, the dog, the vet wants to put him down. Mm-hmm. And I find it very, very hard to do that. I have not slept for the past three, four days because right. I'm crying my eyes out. Well, people get so very attached to their pets. Of course, they do. Unfortunately, pets tend to live l- l- less um, long. Shorter, a shorter period of time would be a better way of putting it than so uh, if, than their owners do. So yeah. you're gonna come again, uh, gonna come up with this problem if you get a pet. Yeah. So if anybody is listening, because for me, um, you know, I find it hard to put him down. Yeah. You know, I rather him die at home because the other ones they know he's ill. The others are just looking at him. Mm. And if anybody is listening, they can give me some advice because I find it hard to kill him because for me... Yeah, well, that's what to, vets are for. Yeah, but to me, that's killing an animal. How come when people, human beings, they don't put human beings down, but when a dog, <laughs> you know, they want to kill the dog. You know, I'm having problems. I'm well, trying Adele, to understand this is, that. this is just... Li- life is the inevitability of death at some point. So it's going to happen one way or another. Maybe the best way is to um, actually put the... Uh, cause the least amount of suffering to the pet that you love. Yeah, but he's walking around. You wouldn't see... He, he, he can't, you can't tell he's ill. Oh, right. Well, then... If, well, then, if any of your listeners well, then why, listening, why does your vet want to put him down, then? Because she's saying to me... Mm. Um, he is... Time's he's up. got arthritis. Yeah. And I, I, um, I even um, tried to speak to Noel Fitzpatrick, you know, who, who he is. The, I don't. The, he's the major um, vet... Noel Fitzpatrick, look it up. I, I most certainly will do nothing of the sort, Adele. Who's Noel Fitzpatrick? You know nothing about... I know nothing about is. Noel Fitzpatrick. That is completely true. Yeah. Who's he? Well, well Google it. You'll find no, out. No, I'm certainly not going to do that. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> Who is he? Um, I... <laughs> He is the major surgeon for dogs. Oh, he's a major he dog a surgeon. Vet. Right. Oh. Right, well, like I said, um, you, you probably want to get a doctor for yourself and uh, leave him in charge with the uh, with the dogs. That's, that's my best medical advice to you. But if anyone is listening to the conversation we're having, mm. who's a oh. pet owner, I just listened to the dog. We're, um, listen to the dog. I just listened to the lady who was saying that the police shot two dogs yes. and she's got a, um, the cow, she's in a big farm. And I, I am trying to get my, health, <laughs> my, my head around it, whether yeah. I should put... put um, I think Brenda. you should ask yourself whether... The uh, whether shuffling off the end of life's conveyor belt now would be uh, would be less suffering than um, sort of dragging it out. Now, don't think of yourself because you want the dog to last forever. That's natural. Don't think of yourself. Think of what would be best for the with the dog. But I want Brendan to die at home. I this is the thing that's irritating me. There is no way I'm going to get a vet right. to inject him and kill him. This is the problem I'm having. Right. Okay. Well, then I guess that you've made your own mind up. And regardless, yeah, if anyone of, is listening, if yeah. anybody's listening who's a dog owner, ask, ask them. Get them to call. I'm. You know, I don't want to be selfish. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not going to have a phoning about pets. <laughs> 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 I don't care how much you uh, ask, but that's not going you to happen. Are, are you are you actually asking for people's advice on how to kill your pet at home, or are you just wanting them to uh, give you positive reinforcement that you've yeah, made the right decision not to take it to the I'm vet? Not going right. To okay. Kill him at home. I'm, right. I'm, you know, this is a negative. Um, okay. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. I'll, I'll, honestly, I go to bed with LBC. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm still not going to have a, a phone in about pets. I <laughs> it doesn't matter how much you listen to us. It's not going to happen now, not ever, never. But I do wish you and um, what's his name? Brendan. Brendan. I wish you and Brendan all the best. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, Adele. Beautiful singing voice, by the way. Well, it's okay. Kind of annoying to be uh, truthful. Every song sounds the blooming same. She starts out quiet, and then for no apparent reason whatsoever, she starts yelling her face off. I could do without it. 0345 Um Martin from Staines, you think I should go through uh, next. All right, then. Martin in Staines. Ugh. Yeah, hi, Dread hi, Nick, how are you? All right, thanks. Dreadful name for a place. Staines. I Ugh. know, I know. I know. There's lots of jokes about that. <laughs> But, uh, moving on, that lady that's just been on regarding the dog, you, you, you coined it perfectly. She has to make the decision whether that dog stays alive for her benefit or for the dogs. And it's a tough decision. We've had to make it. Um, and when it's time for them to go, they have to go. You can't keep them alive because you love them. You just can't. Not when they're in pain. And that 16-year-old dog is really at the end of its life. Yeah. We've had to make the decision. Yeah. Right. We've made this decision. And the vet can tell you that the vet is a good vet. She can be there. He can't bring a lethal drug to her home, obviously. It's a lethal drug, but she can be there when they put him to sleep. You know, they're very good. Most good vets are. Um, I'm not sure if she said she was with Noel Fitzpatrick. He's a bit of a genius. A uh, very revolutionary. He pretty much do anything to fix an animal. Um, but, yeah, she should have a good vet, and, he, and it should be an easy exit for that dog. Yeah. Right. Okay, there you are. Uh, problem solved. <laughs> Next. <laughs> O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Text eight four eight five zero. Email Nick A at lbc dot co dot uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at lbc. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at ten. Nick Abbott, LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott, Alexa, send a comment to LBC. I think he's betraying a quite stupefying ignorance. Daryl says, Eurovision is great because it is a celebration of inclusiveness, diversity, love and unity through the medium of music, dance and visual spectacle. The only people who don't like it are crotchety old gits. <laughs> crotchety old gits. Oh, hello. <laughs> Stu says, I'm, uh, you know, I, I re-affirm um, my opinion of that... Um, dismal nonsense that I saw a clip of uh, last night. I was flipping around by accident. I came across that show and it was um, one of the... I don't even know what they were doing. I mean, it, it, it used to be they just had the show and then that was it. Now there's five shows before you get to the show. Painful. And they just did a recap of each song that they'd done uh, that night. And it, it, each and every one of them was um, the worst song and um, act that I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, um, never mind about Britain's not got, not got no talent. Europe's not got no talent. It was awful. I thought people have actually sat there and watched all of those people sing their songs in their entirety. I couldn't take any more of it, and I, and I only saw a 10-second clip. Stu says, I ate a fabulous emu burger once in New York. <laughs> It was wonderfully tender, says Stu. Which sounds like... I don't know, I get, I get the sense that I'm missing something in there. Like, there was a joke, and I'm not getting it. Love me tender, love emu. Mirtha Tidville. Hello, Jeff. <laughs> uh, good evening, Nick. Uh, uh, it's not Snowdonia. It's Errori. Errori. Spell it. Uh, the peak of... Spell it, spell it for us. E-I-E-Y-R... E-I-E-I. The word, something like that. <laughs> and the, the, the peak is Oiva. Uh, it's what that now? was renamed, mm -hmm. it was all renamed about two years ago. So there you go. Have you ever like, been to uh, um, Brunnerawa? No, uh, right. but but what I now, you know this 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 these conservatives they've all got together. Yeah. It's like a circus, isn't it? You know, with a car 
they come in all clowns in the circus. They've got a crazy car. Yeah. They throw bits of feathers. Yeah, it's, it's one of those clown things. shows in a horror film, is what it yes, is. Yes, yes. Yeah. And they dress up like a horror film. Mm. You know, that, that, that group. Well, the, the, that's what's happening. And I was thinking, you're always on about Brexit. How can we get back into Europe? This is what I was thinking. Mm. And I took my mind back to prior to 2016. 2016 was Brexit. And I had the, the GP friend, a GP doctor, was going round for the Labour Party in Merthyr, Merthyr, that's the way he said round here. And they, <laughs> they, he knocked the door and the guy came to the door, true story. Uh, guy came to the door and said, I'm not voting Labour, I'm voting UKIP. Remember that party, that lot? UKIP? Mm -hmm. Yep. They were, they were reeking their rancid horror. Yes, I, I remember UKIP. We've got a few idiots in our party. Yes. <laughs> and the guy said, I'm not voting UKIP. And uh, the doctor said, why not? Well, he said, all these foreigners coming over to get, to taking my job. Taking, and, and, the, and as I live and breathe, the true story, he turned the doctor, and I know this doctor, and he would say it. And he said, "How? What job is that? I've been signing a sick note for the last twenty years." <laughs> and it's it's got Scott's on truth, right? <laughs> Afterwards, right? Then we have this desperate time in the summer of two thousand and sixteen. We have Brexit. Mm -hmm. I'm four months later, just before Trump gets elected up over there, because it's all part of the same... Yeah, it's all part of the same thing. Yeah, exactly. A president! Can you believe it? No, no one can believe it, Donny. Still stunned. Uh, I went to Asda's, and I shouted across to a woman in the fruit section in Mother, and I shouted across, Show my Evelyn, Shurachie, nice young well lucky, nice to see you, and all this, right? Mm -hmm. And a woman behind me said, Why don't I adjective get back to Poland? Right, Poland. We, we got another two, right? You were speaking and, Welsh, and th she thought you were Polish. Yeah, no, I, as, as I live and breathe. And the, in Bertha, <laughs> the big problem was the big problem was this, right? That they had they got a meat factory in Bertha called, and I won't mention the name, right. uh, a horrendous place. And they were lovely, in. lovely place. I hear. Go ahead. <laughs> Not far from the big hole, right? So the thing is. They were bringing them over from Poland, from from Romania, yeah. from uh, to do all the, do all the work that and we don't want to do. Yeah, exactly. And that work was done by them. Now, mm. where do we get? To? Where are we now? That that woman said that to me because she was empowered by Brexit yeah. and by <clears throat> the, the, by people who had told her it's okay to say things like that. Yes, no, exactly. I'm are, a nutcase. Precisely right, yes. Where are we now? You want to get back into Europe, don't you? You definitely do. I do too. If okay? it would be best for the country, which seems undeniable, then I think we well, the, the best thing would be for us not to have left in the first place, and the second best would be to organise some way to uh, crawl across the get carpet the and, Union, and beg us and beg them to let us back in again. Yes, well, whatever. No. How do you do that? Nobody's come up with a plan. It's no good to rely on Starmer, is it? He, he wants to make it work. That's no good. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure he wants to make anything work. Um, <laughs> a, apart from th this country for him. Okay. Highly, your answer. highly suspicious of fishy. <laughs> Here's your answer, Nick. Right, here it is. Uh, this week... A guy who looks down his nose at the world, and we all look up his nostrils, that's because of his physiology. Mm -hmm. Peter Hitchens. I don't know anything. Yeah. I don't know anything. This guy? Pit Peter Hitchens, a oh. writer for the Daily Mail. He comes up with the answer. Which the is? answer is that England must divest itself of Scotland and Wales and find its own identity. When you do that, <laughs> Nick, you'll be able to get back into Europe. Right, and, um, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take that on board. Uh, if it, if uh, Peter Hitchens uh, thinks it's a yes, then it's a no from me. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. I am tempted, tempted to play um, that tape. I'm thinking about it. Do you want me to do it? 
I'll read some text and stuff first. Tom says, I'm worried the Tories have shown the, uh, the shown Labour the way because, let's face it, Keir Starmer is just a red Tory. Can we have the Nick Abbott party? I think it's the only way forward for this country now. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, Sue emails, if rejoining the EU becomes a possibility, presumably former Remainers will become rejoiners, but what would we call those who want to remain out of the EU? Would they be remouters? as in remain out. I'm sure there's a better name than that, but I think it would probably be uh, breaching broadcasting regulations. Disgusting. Yeah, well, I can think of one. I can think of a couple, as a matter of fact. And um, Rachel takes, so Boris has finally got his very own ditch. <laughs> He's fought a castle with a moat, if you can believe that. A nine-bedroom house. What does he need? Nine bedroom? Oh, please, don't answer that question. I don't want to know. What an absolute shower. I can't believe it. I mean, every day in every way, it just seems to get worse and worse, doesn't it? And I think it's because the, uh, the, the governing regime are um, following the um, Agolf, Agolf Twitler. Oh, shut up! That guy. He's their hero. <laughs> Caroline says they probably want they probably only want uh, Boris Johnson to return so they can stab him in the back. <laughs> no, not them. They're a fan club. They want to um, kiss him on the lips. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Ugh. Absolutely repellent thought. Uh, Caroline says um, on the subject of pets. I don't know. I've, I've met some pretty vicious cats, and I love cats. Yeah, but you wouldn't lose to one in a fight, would you? I mean, if you took one out in public, it wouldn't, like, maul a child to death. I've been looking up the, uh, the numbers of um, dog attacks. 16,000 per year. There was, t last year, 22,000 cases of out-of-control dogs causing injury, and that's up on uh, 16,000 in 2018. So that's a 34% increase. 22,000 cases of out-of-control dogs causing injury. Um, last figure I uh, got was um, fatal, a list of fatal dog attacks in the United Kingdom. It's running uh, at about sort of, uh, five, sometimes five or six a year. Now, if there was a drug that uh, injured 22,000 people and killed five or six people per year, it would be illegal right now. It would be against of the law. You would not be able to have that drug. So why are we um, allowing people to own uh, dogs that can kill people? There was a person that was killed right near where I used to live just the other week. One of these dogs that people should not be allowed to own. There's these huge mounds of uh, muscle with teeth. Why does anybody need a dog like that? And it, it seems that the more dangerous the dog, the stupider the owner. They're attracted to them because they think it's a tough guy thing. It's like having a, a weapon. I mean, in America, this same sort of morons would uh, go and uh, buy themselves uh, an assault rifle. But in this country, you're not allowed to do that. So they go get themselves a, uh, a dog, which is essentially like pulling an unexploded bomb behind you on a string. Unless that's a controversial thing to say, in which case I withdraw it. 0345 6060 973, text 84850, email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Oh, I forgot to play the tape. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. You're joking. you're talking to well now let's see it appears to be uh, ranjit in oldbury ranjit hi mate you're right i am great <laughs> you are on fire tonight mate you are absolutely on fire <laughs> i'm going to change uh, what i was going to say i was going to talk about dogs yeah you know but i think you've said enough and i don't want to upset any more people the thing is <laughs> Too they, should late. Be muzzled. they should be muzzled yeah and I think some of the owners should be muzzled. Yeah, well, well, that's what I was going to say. Are we talking about the dogs yeah. or the owners? Yeah, you beat yeah, me to it. Yeah, they should be muzzled, yeah. Mm. 
So, they, you know, I, I see these people. I mean, it's died down a little bit now, yeah, but it is an extension of of them. They think it's their manhood, yeah, and, and being a weapon, yeah. A lot of the kids that were dealing in drugs years ago, yeah, would have a dog as a weapon, hmm. yeah. So, you know but, what? But they waltz that, along with, a, with this um, with wild animal uh, on a piece hmm. of string, imagining that if a, the hmm. switch goes off in its tiny doggy brains, that they're going to be in control of it. That they're going to lose control in about half a second. And if, uh, well, if they get really lucky, the dog won't kill them. It'll kill somebody yeah. else. The thing is, what about human beings? What about when they lose control? They go around shooting students at schools and yeah. colleges in America. They do. No, you can't trust anybody. You, you know, and you know when you say these big bad dogs, you know, a Jack Russell, yeah? I know he bit somebody's cheek off early, or uh, Jack Russell did, yeah? Right, um, but, but well, yeah, okay. Well, if you lie still uh, uh, long enough, they bit his cheek off. He jumped up. I think he went to stroke him, right? He jumped up and took a chunk of his um, cheek out. Right. Which is well, that, that's a, that is a bad dog. They are. I mean, the thing is, at the end of the day, they should be running around in uh, in the jungles or whatever. You know, <laughs> not <cooped> up with, <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm not an expert on flora yeah. and fauna. <laughs> But I'm not sure that Jack Russells belong in the jungle. No, I can't I really, know, I can't really see them in that no, environment. No, 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 I'm not. A, 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 I'm not a pet hater or a pet lover, mm. but I'm always cautious, right, about these big dogs, yeah, yes. that are walking around with no muzzle on, yeah, and and being dra pulling. dragged around by a moron. Usually, the the more yeah. vicious the dog, the more moronic the person on the end of the string. You, you know, when you say when you have a divorce and you meet your next partner you try to make them look like the other person that you've just left no i think some of these dogs look, <laughs> some, of these do some of these dogs right they look like they are oh and yeah they, and they act like they well are that's owners, uh, yeah, that know? is well and established if, yes going to um the conservatives yeah i think that this might be the beginning of the civil war between the conservatives yeah gosh i hope and so I, and I, I hope so as well yeah and I heard Rhys Mogg this morning on, on your on your radio station mm -hmm. say, "Oh, we got to stick behind Rishi Sunak until My the next view. election." Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. You know what? What a what a dumbo he is. You know what? I've spoken to him a couple of times, right? You know, on this radio station when he used to work here. Mm. And, and I think to myself, you know, what, what we all envy to have a good education, right, and to be ambitious. And if that is the end product, mate, I'd rather be a road <laughs> sweeper, to be honest with you. You know what? And, you know, he reminds me of that in, in the Carry On films, uh, Charles Hawtrey. Yes. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. That's what he reminds yeah. me of, right? Yeah. And at the end of the day, Pity Patel, right? Ugh. You know what? I've, 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 I've got a delivery driver that comes to my shop to deliver stuff. Yeah, he's got a fetish about Pretty Patel. And I said, what, what are you on about, mate? Right? He says, look, there's something about her I really love. And I said, you are. <laughs> and I, and I, could not, I could not believe it, right? And you yeah. know what? He says, did I speak to his wife? He said, don't ever tell my wife that I've got no, a fetish about yeah. Pretty In so, fact, don't, don't yeah. make, a, make a mental note not to speak to that person again. If he, if he comes in your shop, just, just smile <laughs> and um, no, uh, move no. slowly away. Don't make any sudden moves there, Rogers. Uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy a whip, right? And then when he comes, I'm going to go... Well, he, he might actually like that. He, <laughs> he, he might not leave. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ranjit. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Sai says, "Don't get me started about them dogs. American pit bulls. They are a banned breed, and most of the people who own them are idiots." Says Sai. That is true. Unfortunately, he spelled own O W E N. <laughs> Thereby holding his argument under the waterline. <laughs> Martin says, I hear that Pretty Patel has said that Fishy is managing a decline of the Conservative Party. I say that gaining power upon a foundation of lies was always going to unravel like a cheap suit. These ERG nutters are playing a final card and threatening to get rid of Fishy with another leadership contest. Is the, <laughs> is the lettuce still a viable candidate? Absolutely. Absolutely. I say let, uh, let's give the vegetable a chance. Couldn't possibly be any worse than what we've got at the moment. I mean, may maybe it has integrity. This government this will government have integrity, integrity, professionalism and accountability. Every level, yeah, I know. Ugh. 
0345 6060 Ashling, Bromley. Hi, Nick. Bromley. How are you doing? Ashling, I mean. Yes, Ashling. Good, thanks. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was going to call you in last night on um, hitchhiking because you were talking about that and mm. then tonight you were talking about the um, the bullies. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to go to the bullies first, the, the dogs. Oh, the, um, the, right, the American Bulldogs. That's what you're talking yeah, about, right? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a few breeds of them now, I think. But um, yeah. I, I love dogs. But yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you on that. Um, uh, yeah, I think, but it's really difficult, I find, to talk to some people that have have particular types of dogs that that can be really dangerous. They yeah. just don't want to really see past that. And it's just like, it's a conversation you just can't even have. With, the with amount of like. times that I've... Uh, I tell you what, it's, it's exactly like in America when they interview the neighbour of someone who's just shot 30 children in school. Oh, but he was such mm. a quiet boy and he was so nice and he, you know, loves his mum and all of that. Yeah. It's the same thing with the people with those devil dogs. It's that, oh, but they're so good with kids and uh, they, you know, they're never uh, 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 vicious at all and they're just so lovely and warm and, yeah, right up into the point they bite your head off. Exactly. I think that it's like they're trying to convince themselves of something. Um, my neighbour actually has one, and it's just, I mean, he looks fine, but it just it makes me not want to be around. Yeah, <laughs> they don't look the fine, day. though. They, they, they look no, as though know, they're, being, they're, they're, they're bred they're for one thing, different. attack. Yeah. But the other day, actually, I was um, completely unexpectedly. It was an American bulldog. I'm not sure exactly what it was. But um, I was in a park and I got knocked down by a massive dog. Mm. Um, and it was this young guy. Um, I, I mean, you know, I don't know, probably in his 20s. Um, and he had, you know, the little leads that you get to to, to help, like with a puppy to, that pulls in and out. Oh, yeah. Like they're, they're made for like tiny little puppies. And he had this massive dog that probably weighed more than me on this lead. On this lead. Morons. And um, the dog came bounding towards me and he pressed the clicker <laughs> as if that was going to do anything. <laughs> And the dog completely broke it and then just knocked me down. I just looked up to him, expecting the guy to do something. And he yeah. just grunted. I think he was probably off his face. Mm -hmm. But it was just it was just one of these situations where, like, what is wrong with people? Like, yeah. they're blind to the reality of it. Uh, yes, well, we could um, occupy ourselves with that question from now until the end of time. What is wrong with people? Yeah. <laughs> Big question. Yeah. But um, on the hitchhiking, mm -hmm. um, I was going to say, surprisingly enough, people actually, I didn't realise, um, people still do that in Ireland. I was in Ireland the other day for my niece's first birthday. And, um, yeah, we were passing, my, I was in the car with my mum, and we were passing uh, just one of our local roads, and there was um, a guy standing out, and mum's like, oh, he wants to live to town. And she said it so naturally. I was like, what? And she said, yeah, people still come sometimes. Like, And I was just so shocked. It was kind of cute, though, kind of endearing to think that people still do it. Like, And people still actually pick pick them up and bring them into town. Because in Ireland, everything's so spread out. You know, you're not, you know, if, if someone doesn't have a car, they, yeah. they don't really have another way of getting into town unless they walk 12 right. miles. There's no buses. Yeah, it's not, it's not um, like you're picking up a hitchhiker in Camden. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. But it's also nice because then obviously we've had really bad weather the last few days and mm. there's been a few times I've gotten caught in the rain and I'm just like, if you were in Ireland, like in, in like my like local community parish or whatever, you, a car would never pass you if it was pouring with rain. Like, you know, they'd stop and they'd help you. Well, it's funny you should say that because yeah. um, I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin and she's living in yeah, the yeah. south of France now and uh, she says the same thing, that the, the people hitch in and out of town all the time. Time. Yeah. And uh, you know you you pick them up because that's just a nice uh, French thing to do. Yeah, my mum's actually south of France at the moment because they've got a little house there, and she's just there for a few days. But um, yeah, she's kind of she's it's just such a different lifestyle. It's just so different. It's, yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> all right. But um, good work. Nick, I'm missing you during the week. <laughs> You're missing me during I, the week. Yeah, I know you used to like you were doing some shows because because everyone has moved oh, around yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, there, there are podcasts available. There's the two of the Friday and the Saturday night. We take the news and the ads out. It means it takes less time to listen to. Those are called the Nick Abbott Whole Show, Nick Abbott The Whole Show podcast. And then there's the Nick Abbott Habit, which is a half an hour of the best of old shows. And then there's the one that I do with um, Carol McGiffin. Oh, right, yeah. Which is, um, I th it, is, it is quite funny. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? Have you ever uh, written in with a problem? 
I haven't, but I have listened. Right. It's really funny. It's yeah. really good. I might have to... Because I did 10 o'clock as one of the future. I always listen to LBC, but a lot of the shows I listen back. But 10, I always listen live. Yeah. But I'm not going to comment on the new 10 o'clock slot. Let's just say. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks for restraining yourself, Ashley. 0345 6060 973. If you just do an internet search on my name, Nick Abbott Podcasts, I do believe that they will all become apparent as though by magic. This is LBC. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Right, so what are we doing? We are doing a radio show, Gibbon. Paul says big dogs should at least be neutered and only allowed one shot at being Prime Minister. <laughs> what do you say, Budge? This is complete nonsense. Complete nonsense. <laughs> Sarah, get me a couple of bricks. Sarah, Sarah says... Sarah says, dogs can and should sit on seats on trains. Animals are a species of God, and you should not be speciesist. Your attitude is uncivilized and sickening. <laughs> I'll sum that text up for you. <laughs> yeah, you're an idiot, Sarah, and I mean that in a helpful way. I assume that you're joking. I assume that you are making light of the subject. Dogs should not sit on the seats. They can sit on your seat at home. Who cares? But don't impose your dog's bottom on where the rest of us are going to sit. New Forest. Hello, Sally. Hello. Sally. How are you? I am great, mate. Well, unfortunately, during an anniversary visit, uh, me and my partner witnessed the most horrific dog attack. And I can still remember every single minute like it was just happening now. Right. It was this massive dog barks and just it was an alsatian. It just took off and floored an elderly gentleman to my right and locked, latched onto his tiny little dog, who was a cute little dog called Mr. Bits. And eventually he, we managed to wrestle the dog off him, leaving the man crying and blubbering on the floor. And despite endlessly trying to get hold of authorities and report and say, listen, this dog is going to kill someone, we think, no one wants to bother because it was a bank holiday. And upon doing some research, it transpires that during the pandemic, lots of people bought dogs they shouldn't have. Yes. And there's been, an in there's been an increase in big dog attacks. Correct, yes, because morons bought dogs because they, they thought it'd be uh, amusing. They thought, oh, it'd be lovely, you know, like you could switch yeah, it this, off and this, put... This dog actually had a child with it too, and um, the man didn't have it on a proper lease, and it, yeah. it, he lost control of it. And I felt you know, really that dogs like that size should be muzzled or have to do dog training um, until they are and wear a disc to say that they have been trained. Yeah, there's, was... there's no amount of training that you can take the dog out of a dog. It's a dog, for crying out loud. It's, um, it's programmed to kill. I mean, how else in the wild would it um, feed itself other than kill things? Well, I guess it, they used to surround them and kill them, yes. But it, it certainly did. It literally, it, it yelped and it went for this dog. And the guy, we could see the guy knew it was going to do it as well. And it was, it's just, it was really, honestly, we thought it was going to kill the dog in, in the man's arms. It was just the worst thing. I'll never forget it. It was, it was yeah. something, you yeah. know. People should not be allowed to have a dog that you would lose to in a fight. I mean, that just seems to be, uh, make perfect sense to me. All right, thanks. Thanks for the bad news, Sally. 0345 6060 973. Dominic says, uh, maybe one of your callers should get an alligator, because they're lovely and cuddly. <laughs> I don't know which caller he was referring to, but, uh, you know, it, it was uh, not that last one, but uh, some other. Ahmed says, when Rhys Mogg was asked about what he thought about Fishy not allowing EU laws to expire, his response was, he has broken his word. This is very serious, in my view. My view? My view. That is just such a pile of nonsense, these laws that are going to expire. And if, if only we can expire all of these EU laws, then suddenly the country is going to be saved. Oh. It's just such tripe. They don't even know what those laws are. We've been down this road. Smug, this top-hatted twiglet, used to have, as his only job apart from all of the other jobs that he had on the side. I mean, you know, they, they are part-timers. I mean, we only pay them, what is it, 87 grand a year, plus whatever they get to be uh, ministers, plus a quarter of a million pound in uh, expenses. I mean, it's not like we're paying for, uh, you know, the best. 
they can only give us a certain amount of time for that kind of money. You know, what amounts to about 300 grand a year. Plus, of course, uh, we subsidise their food. Plus, we subsidise their drink. Plus, we give them free, free uh, travel and etc. and so on. But, uh, you know, that's uh, not the kind of money that they would uh, ordinarily get out of bed to earn. Um, I can't remember what I was talking about now. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, these laws, these silly laws. Yeah, he his job was to come up with laws that we were uh, saddled with from the ew that he wanted rid of, and he couldn't think of any. So he subcontracted out his work to the readers of The Sun. And guess what? They couldn't think of any either. Here's that story. Smug blasted fishy Sunak for scaling back a promised bonfire of EU laws. Scaling back a promised bonfire of EU laws? Oh, no. But what about the EU law that says that we can't, um... You know, the one about not letting us, uh... No, I can't think of anything. And neither could he. Smug championed the scrapping of leftover Brussels rules when he was the business secretary. What he knows about business, you could write in the back of a stamp with a paint roller. He led a Brexiter backlash against Fishy Sunak for breaking this key pledge. And right enough, one of the, one of the many weird things that Fishy Sunak has done is release that video. You, you remember the, the video of uh, him um, when he was uh, seeking to be the prime minister of this? He's the prime minister of this country. Can you believe that? No. <laughs> and uh, it was... Uh, it was some um, somebody putting reams of paper on a desk and then um, choosing a uh, shredder to put them through. EU laws, putting them through a shredder. Vote for Fishy. He'll get the job done. <laughs> what an absolute shower. Anyway, Smug compared the PM to a member of the House of Borgia, the uh, wealthy family who were notorious during the Italian Renaissance. They got, um, uh, oh, what's that place? It's the last place I went on holiday. Florence. They got Florence all tied up. And they were uh, famous for treachery and corruption and immorality, which just sounds like they sh should put that on the next general election Tory battle bus. Treachery, corruption, immorality. Uh, finally, a bus that tells the truth. <laughs> During his Tory leadership campaign, Fishy Sunak vowed to review or repeal, actually shred, 2,400 retained EU laws in his first 100 days as PM. That was what was on that video. That was his number one priority. Under my leadership, the government's priorities are your priorities. Yeah, number one priority. One of his many number one priorities. And when he eventually uh, entered number 10 in late October, Fishy stuck to a deadline to scrap EU regulations still on the UK statute books by the end of this year without knowing what any of them were. None of these people know what these laws are. It's just that they've got Europe on the front page. So naturally, they want rid of it. And you should be very, very concerned when they start bellyaching about rules and regulations. Because the regulations are usually in place to protect us poor dopes who pay tax from uh, rampaging corporations. You know. The little people. Us lot. Not leprechauns. But it was announced that rather than getting rid of thousands of pieces of EU legislation, we've now, um, about, which now apparently number 4,829, the government's only going to revoke 600 of them. And does anybody have any idea what those 600 are? No. Of course not. They haven't read them. But they're complaining about it anyway. Senior Tory Brexiters express their fury at Fishy Sunak over his watering down of the aims of the retained EU law revocation and reform bill senior Tory Brexiters all of whom were totally nonplussed when it came to saying why they have expressed their fury it's just something else to get publicly angry about it's like a game smug led the outcry of course of course he did my view yes 
Bill Cash said this house is being treated in a manner which is clearly inconsistent with with uh, clear promises already made. You know, like the government breaking promises is <laughs> is something he's only just noticed. Wake up! It's later than you think. And then in the uh, uh, the next in a comedy cavalcade, Marc Francois. The chairman of the European Research Group of Tory um, swivel-eyed um, nutjobs said to Kemp, uh, barely bad enough, the business secretary, what on earth are you playing at? <laughs> he said... <laughs> That's what he said. And if you find yourself in a group with Jacob Smug and Bill Cash and Marc Francois, then you should maybe check your ticket, because you might have been assigned the wrong seat. <laughs> And so drippy, fishy Sunak is only going to repeal 600 EU laws. And the blame must lie with someone else, because it always does. Doesn't it, Bodger? I, I can't comment on that. And the blame this time lies with, drumroll please, civil servants. No! Civil servants. The business secretary, barely bad enough, blamed Whitehall officials, saying that she had inherited a situation in which the focus was on which laws should be preserved rather than pursuing the meaningful reform government and businesses want to see. OK, businesses don't want to see this reform, so that's not true. Businesses want certainty. Businesses want the same laws that they have in Europe so that we can trade freely with our biggest trading partner. They don't want to have special laws in this country. And does anybody actually believe for a single solitary second that our standards will be better than those in the European Union? You know, as far as... Uh, I mean, which would you rather do? Bathe up to your eyeballs in a British uh, river of my choice or a French river of your choice? Select. I mean, they haven't cited a single thing that they want reformed. Meaningful reform. That's what they're after. That's what the government and businesses want to see. Well, businesses don't want to see that. They want to know where they are, businesses. They want to know uh, where they are now and where they're going to be in a year's time so that they can plan. They don't want to be um, riding the, the wave of a catastrophic clown show that can't make their mind up about anything. Meaningful reform. They haven't got a clue what kind of reform they want, other than just getting rid of the word Europe. I mean, it's either that, or worse, they know exactly what laws they want repealed, but it's so toxic that they don't want you to know. They just want to um, bundle them up in hundreds of other laws so that they can um, get rid of them on the stealth. I suspect that's precisely what's happening here. They've zeroed in on a few laws that are an impediment to their further enrichment. But because it would be too uh, politically damaging for them to say, well, we want this law out so that we can put more uh, poison in children's toys. <laughs> I mean, I exaggerate to uh, make a point. But they don't want you to know that, so they just bundle them up in thousands of other laws. They say, well, let's just get rid of all of them, but they don't care about any of the others. They just, they're just concentrating on that one. I mean, it's all of a piece with running down any institution that millionaires don't use, you know, like state schools and the NHS and social care and basically anything that uses up taxes that could be spent on giving the rich a tax cut. Tell me that that's not what this is about. Laws like providing workers with sick pay and holiday pay and equal pay and maternity leave and basically anything that gets in the way of corporations making more from their employees by paying them less and giving them weaker rights. Those kind of laws. Tell me what, that's not what this is about. I mean, what's mind-blowing is that poor people are persuaded that those evil EU laws are something they want rid of. What gives you that impression? That the people in charge are acting in your best interests. Seriously, what gives you that impression? 0345-6060-973. It's just past 11.30 on LBC. The news headlines with Tim Daly. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC.
I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio making a picture again. It's a radio show, dear. Dave texts, Devil Dogs, the Romans used to send 200 Watt Watt Rottweilers into battle to soften up the opposition. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the Roman Empire was a health and safety failure zone. Not too keen on uh, health and safety in the Roman Empire. Bodmin. Hello, Malcolm. Oh, hello, Nick. Malcolm. Nick, um, as, you, <coughs> as you know, I'm a connoisseur of music, and I'm watching the Eurovision. <laughs> I, and, didn't, I didn't know uh, that. Go on. Uh, well, OK. But anyway, the UK is second from bottom, but I want to Are report we? that... I think there was a fault with her microphone because you could barely hear her and yeah. the instruments, you could hardly hear them, poor girl. So, as a consequence, she's laughed from bottom. But Yeah, <laughs> I, I suspect that it might have something to do with um, being a, a terrible a song. Or, party. I've got no, yeah, no yeah. idea. Yeah, every, everybody but hates run, us. We're just going to have to get used to it. Well, the, the reason I said I'm a connoisseur of music was I, I sent my daughter a text just after the end of the song and I said it's going to be Sweden... Or Belgium, because I did listen to them all. Now, Nick, politics. There, there's some, yeah. um, there's some disconnect yeah, with your insistence that you are a connoisseur of music and that you are <laughs> watching that <laughs> dreadful show. <laughs> okay, but um, politics, right? M more <coughs> pressing, serious business. Um, I was um, on the fence with the royalty until the Queen. Um, <clears throat> passed away. Right. And on on the TV, they were showing lots of absolutely beautiful video of her as a young woman, and then through her ages, until she was more recent. And it, it a sense of humour really struck me. And then you had Theresa May's anecdote about in the the, the, the lodge when they, they went for a barbecue or whatever it was, a picnic. And that was a lovely story about the cheese. I don't know whether you recall it. Um, and, vaguely, something about cheese, yeah. Oh, right, she well, dropped the cheese on the grass and then put it back on a plate and, um, yeah, something like that. Right, well, Prince Charles, I know you heard it the other day, but Prince Charles, um, I think he went on a train and he made an announcement, or he, he made a speech, and he his, his opening words were, or closing words were, mind the gap, yeah? <laughs> and, I th and I think he's, he's gone full troll on the Tory party because he said mind the gap and yesterday a poll came out and the um this poll and is given Labour a twenty seven point lead over the Tories. Mm. I think that's a bit of a so stretch. I, uh, citing that so? and um Charlie no, saying I, that uh, mind mind the gap. But how could you possibly know that, I, that that's what he was thinking about? Was he actually standing well, on a train at the time? Well they say he's he they, he likes to keep out of politics, but now he gets the red boxes and everything who, every morning. Who says he likes to keep out of politics? <laughs> yeah, right. Who says that? So, but well, the media. That the I don't think they do. I think it's the opposite of that. I think the media are uh, having a yes. fit that he uh, actually interferes in politics because apparently you can only be in politics if you're going to talk <laughs> about politics, which is curious because the papers make a living out of doing it, but um, apparently any old journalist can, uh, can uh, express vast screeds about politics, but nobody else can unless no they're news. a politician. Very little news, yeah. But, um, so that's that, and uh, the, the, the headlines are <coughs> on the media this evening. Are you all right? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm fine. The headlines this evening are on about the revolt in the Tory party in this big conference that they've held this yeah. afternoon that you've been um, um, alluding to. So mm -hmm. the Tories are revolting, Nick. Yeah, but they we certainly we are. We all knew that. That's, that's we not, knew that anyway. not news, no. Yeah, well, I'm just I, I'm, here, I'm just looking at the uh, the mail online to yeah, see if, if that is actually true. But the top story is Princess Kate stuns world <laughs> uh, yeah, she, she <laughs> by opening Eurovision Liverpool's together. Eurovision uh, final. Yeah, stuns the world, or at least the uh, the couple of thousand people who are watching the, that mess in uh, this country and around Europe. Those who have got absolutely nothing better to do. She's definitely um, a pianist, though. You, you, you can see she. She's obviously skilled, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Well, wh what else does she but, do? I mean, she's got no end of time. Point, it's not like she's uh, working for a living. 
My, my closing point to Nick is yes. my annoyance. Finally. Over the, yeah, <laughs> finally, my annoyance <laughs> since the local elections yeah. um, or, or, um, with the BBC, Sky, all of the newspapers banging on about Labour's eight or nine point lead in the poll, um, mm. in the election. Right. Now, I have mentioned that we did, there was no voting in Wales, no voting in Scotland, no voting in London, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Correct. But this poll, and before the election, Labour were 18, and now look, they're 27 points. Yeah. So I hope these media are now going to say that it's not the polls that were out, it was the, the um, what are they called, sophologists, it's, it's your courtesies of the world who are out this time around, because if they're claiming that Labour got an eight-point lead, I think they are miles out. Well, they may have got an eight-point lead in the uh, in the elections that have just passed. I mean, I, I don't know what the exact number is off the top of my head, but the, as you say, they don't include Scotland and London and uh, Wales, Wales, which yeah. means that, um, I mean, well, and, and none of those three areas are going to vote Conservative in any great number. So it's it's actually worse than you expected, Fishy. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I think that Prince Charles and the Archbishop and um, General Dannett, I think they've got the Tories number. And the more people in the uh, the, the so-called establishment that the Tories hate, I hope they all start piping. I tell you what, you should have heard of the Lords yesterday, the House of Lords, mm. and people on about this yep. immigration bill. Well, oh, my Lord. Well, they're very upset. Uh, oh, my Lord. Wow. Did you just say that? Yes, yeah. yes. Mm. But the things they were saying, Nick, about the bill, yeah. and, and under the Tories, the, the, the absolute disgrace that they are for the things that they're even thinking of. Well, proposing, they, yeah? they are, it's, it's, it's like um, uh, Coke, cl it's like classic Coke and, uh, yeah. and new Coke. We, we've got new yeah. Tories, which um, I, I'm not that keen on. Absolutely. And we've got classic Tories, which is what you're talking about. Um, I don't think yeah. there is such a thing as a Conservative Party anymore. It seems to have morphed into um, something else. There's like the European Research Group. Um, uh, I, I don't know what oh, they are now. I've got no idea really what they are. Um, I, I bet the person who's leading them has got no clue what they are. I bet the person before one who was uh, the occupant of number 10, doesn't have a clue. I, I can't comment on you that. You can't comment uh, on I, that. I, right I, 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 busy um, counting money. Anyway, got to go, Malcolm. Thanks a lot, mate. It's worse than you think. Because uh, after all that um, song and a dance about getting voter ID, because, well, 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 you know, every vote must count, they said. More than 800 uncounted postal votes have been found following last week's local elections in North Lincolnshire. What? 864 votes for the election in a place called Broughton and Scorby Ward have been found, but only after the result has been declared. 864 votes. Now, you might think, well, that's not very many. But there were only a total of 1,880 votes. Which means it's not not very far away from half of those who voted did not get their vote counted. The law apparently does not allow votes to be counted following a declaration. Guess who won that ward? They said it was a genuine mistake and the election outcome in that ward had been referred to the Electoral Commission. Oh, well, I, I bet they'll have an investigation. <laughs> They'll have an inquiry. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, it can't wait. 864 votes for the election in Broughton and Scorby have been found only after the result had been declared. It's about half of the total votes. 864. Guess who won? Conservatives won that ward. Oh. Therefore, no investigation is required. Labour came second. Isn't that an absolutely surprising outcome? No. <laughs> I mean, can you believe that this government, while insisting on voter ID to counter election fraud, supposedly, this election fraud that doesn't exist, is now presiding over a country where about half the votes cast in a local election were somehow lost. 
and yet the Tories still won that election. Aren't you totally stunned? No. <sighs> Absolute shower. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Hang about, Nick. Listen. Now, what I'm trying to say to you is this, Nick, right? Ollie emails. I email a lot. Because someone needs to defend Mog and the Tories on this far-left show. <laughs> Where's the balance, says Ollie. You never mention all the good things that Mog has done, yet you mock his voice on every show because you don't have a credible argument against him. Hey, Ollie, you forgot to mention all the good things that Mog has done. Because uh, I'm coming up with nothing. And I bet you ain't got nothing neither. <laughs> That's not mocking. That's a, a perfect impersonation. It was like you just walked into the room. Can you think of any of the good things that you've done, Smug? I don't know anything. He doesn't know anything. He's going to give it some thought. Brighton. Hello, Ben. Hello, Nick. Uh, thanks so much for taking the call. Um, I, I, um, I, 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 this doubt has occurred to you already, but I don't think they actually want the uh, laws to um, be repealed at all. I thought we want them, most of them to remain in place because if they do remain in place, they can always attribute anything that's going bad to, with the country to the fact that Brexit has not quite been done yet. Yeah. It's still, we've still got to cross that particular bridge. It's like with the, with the, um, with the small boats. They don't really want the small boats thing covered at all. They mm. don't want it um, solved, yeah? yeah? And by the way, it's not actually a problem. 45,000 a year we're talking about, yeah? Well, that's the, the government's figures, yeah? That's Chelsea's gate each week, yeah? <laughs> Full and Broadway can handle it, can't it? I mean, not seriously. Full I think that you are completely it. correct. I think you've got it out on the nail that the government don't want any of these issues solved. They don't want Brexit solved. They don't want the boat problem solved. They don't no. want the they don't want the NHS workers um, strikes solved. No, they want it. They want it as an ongoing issue, an ongoing bleeding yes, sore. Yeah, they it, can then say, "I was going to say, scab, we're the only but, people um, that can sort out this particular thing." Yeah. And as for the, the, I don't know that 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 previous fellow, I don't know what his name was. Um, the bloke that said, you know, there's nothing that, um, you know, you never mentioned anything that Reese Mogg oh, has yeah. done. I mean, I would love it if someone told me what that lanky pillar could ever done. <laughs> but he's never done anything, has he? <laughs> not for us, no. Uh, not that I can recall, no. But um, that was uh, eloquently put there, Ben. Thanks for that. A, um, a running sore. I, w I was going to say scab, which is pr probably not nicer, but um, a little bit. Which would you rather have, a scab or a running saw? I think I'd rather have a scab. It's, um, it's just another one of these things that the government wants to pick at to excuse their own failure. Oh, well, I mean, the NHS would be great if it wasn't for all these lefty activists striking nurses. That kind of thing. Oh, we'd really be able to, uh, you know, stop those uh, boats if it wasn't for all these lefty activist lawyers who do insist on up trying to uphold the law. It's like they've got a thing about it. It's just another blooming excuse for their own failure. They just flail around looking for somewhere to apportion blame. Nothing is ever their fault. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. And it started, I suspect, with him. He is the one that is mostly at fault for the where for where we are today. Without him, then um, none of what has uh, followed him w would have been contemplated by people. I mean, it certainly wasn't contemplated by people before him. I mean, this take back control. Oh, Parliament must be sovereign and we must take back control. And then the moment that they could, uh, that they felt they could get away with it, they've now swerved Parliament and it has no control at all. I mean, there was this uh, thing that um, happened uh, just yesterday. An, an interesting column in the uh, I uh, newspaper. 
about the Tories now going round Parliament, which has never happened before, apparently. And you can't tell me that they would have the nerve to just to, to introduce a law and then it gets the law gets knocked back and Parliament and um, the ministers say, "Oh, well, we're just going to do it anyway." You know, like like we're running a um, a, a dictatorship here. If Ian Dunt had this um, column in the uh, Independent newspaper, he said, "Tiny little news story this week." It won't feature in many of the papers, it won't get mentioned on the evening news, but it constitutes a direct challenge to the whole basis of parliamentary democracy. Very quietly, apparently when uh, no one was watching, the Home Office used a ministerial power to directly overrule Parliament. It's unprecedented. It's the kind of thing that no previous government would ever dreamed of, uh, dreamed of doing. It's a sign of a department and indeed a whole g growing, a, a whole governing culture which has simply lost any respect for accountability or the restraint of executive power. Put simply, Parliament rejected something, and then the government did it anyway. All very hush-hush, all very tucked away, all very technical and nerdy, but it broke the central principle by which free societies are distinguished from authoritarian ones. And there's not much of a difference anymore. And I think it's this guy's fault. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. He set the template. Actually, he didn't. He was just part of the fan club for this bloke. I'm president. Can you believe it? He set the tem the template. They're just ripping up of rules that have um, been in place and uh, protected citizens for uh, decades, if not hundreds of years. Just tore them up. Nobody had ever thought of doing that anymore uh, uh, before that, because they didn't think they'd be able to get away with it. Because they weren't that crooked. They couldn't possibly have imagined that anyone would allow them to do it. But he just barged in, did Donny, and um, just did whatever he wanted. I can be more presidential than anybody. And people on this side of the pond, they thought, wow, well, that, that's great. If that's what you can do. I mean, who, who could have imagined such a thing before um, the uh, peach powder puff president came along? And this is where we are now. They've taken back control, but not given it to Parliament, which is what they said. They've taken back control for themselves. It's like a coup. Anyway, I, I would um, uh, address your attention to Ian Dunst's columns. The, uh, it's um, dated the 12th of this month in the I newspaper. Kind of depressing, but that's where we are. But you can't complain about it now, of course, because <laughs> they've removed your ability to do that too. What a what a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. Lucy says, does the Conservative Democratic Organisation have any interest in restoring more transparency to government? Well, let me think about that. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, they'll they'll uh, restore transparency just like they'll restore integrity. This government will have integrity, professionalism and accountability at every level. Yeah, integrity and accountability. I, I forgot about professionalism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good one, Fishy. Lucy says, what's more, do they have any thoughts or concerns for the abuse of democratic rights in Rwanda? I don't know. I think maybe we should give them a one-way ticket and they can go and then investigate it thoroughly themselves. Who's with me? Phil says, no one who doesn't know the difference between a sheep and a goat should own a dog. <laughs> well, that's just a fact. And Rachel says, has anybody heard Pretty Patel uh, today at this conference? God help us. Yeah, she made a uh, a big error, a boo boo. She said something of the order of, um, um, and the people want Britain to get back into the UK, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I'll sum it up for you. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, a lot of uh, hot air and noise signifying nothing. Fred texts. I mean, honestly, pretty Patel. It's incredible, when you think about it, that when she was uh, the uh, Home Secretary, people thought, well, it couldn't possibly get any worse than this. But they managed to find a way. It's extraordinary, really. I mean, quite an achievement, actually. 
How can we get worse than Pretty Patel? They thought. And they, they put their heads together and they came up with Cruella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and we said thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Don't do us any more favors. Fred says the vet. Oh God, we're, this seems like hours ago we were talking about this. The vet did a house visit to dispatch our dear old mutt, but that was in 1982. So maybe the law is different now. Even so, not a great experience. Oh, and Eurovision is a lot of old pony. <laughs> well, I could have told you that. Um, Lawrence said, I heard you say last night that Eurovision was bad. I thought, surely you're exaggerating. I watched a lot of tonight's show, and yes, it really was bad. If you want to watch something truly, excruciatingly terrible, and, and that's where the sentence ends, maybe he just couldn't stand it anymore. He threw himself out of his window, forgetting he lives in the basement. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. This is absolute tosh. Dude! Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Peter texts, they will not have us back in the EU as we cost them too much money and we behave like obnoxious, petulant children. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I mean, if you were them, would you have us back? I don't think so. Too much trouble. Uh, Johnny says, it's all blooming Jeremy Corbyn's fault. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jeremy Corbyn. No! See what you've done? He says it's Jeremy Corbyn's fault, refusing a pay rise and giving it to charity instead. Refusing a £10,000 working from home allowance and giving it to charity instead. Claiming the lowest expenses of any backbench MP, a simple gel biro one year. Typical politician, no principles or decency, only interested in themselves. They're all the same. Thank God he didn't get enough power. A <laughs> few, says Johnny. Yeah. He might have got in and redistributed some of the nation's wealth, and we don't want that, do we? Peterborough. Hello, George. Hi, Nick. How George. are you? Good, thanks. Um, so my question is, is how much of, a, you know, the S&P now have been in power for X amount of years, and without that, the Conservatives would not be in power. Do you think it's underplayed how much they give to Conservatives in England? How much they give? You mean the, well, like into the power because they would all be Labour seats, wouldn't they? Uh, well, it's debatable. It's more likely than the, than they would be Conservative. Let's put it like that. So, in terms of the Conservative government, wouldn't be what it is today without the S and P. So, in an ad hoc way, surely they are popping up the Conservative government, aren't they? And if that falls apart with what's going on at the moment, surely Conservatives can be no more. Well, um, yes, the left do tend to split their vote between a multiplicity of parties, whereas the right wing tend to only have the Tories uh, to call their home. So, yes, that is the, the left wing um, essentially pulling, su pulling failure from the jaws of success. And I wouldn't be remotely surprised if they did that again the next time around. I completely agree, but I, I think the the success of the S and P is underplayed in terms of the Conservatives' success in, in in the same way. I think the Labour government, as you know, they would be incredibly well off if the S and P were not a party. Perhaps it would also um, be an impediment for uh, Tory rule if we had um, proportional representation. In terms of what? The, the sheep farms in Scotland need, you know, a person in Parliament talking and, you know, being able to know about that. <laughs> That's not quite what I had in mind, but... <laughs> some, well, what are you going for, Nick? Um, I'm interested. Proportional and representation. If we had proportional representation in this country, then we would not have a party that, can, that has runners for something like two-thirds of the time since the Second World War 
on less than half the vote. They, they usually get less than half the vote, almost always, and yet they have 100% of the power. It would put an end to that. So are you saying first past vote is not the way it has? I don't think it's... Well, I think we're one of the few countries on Earth that actually uh, organises our affairs in that manner. So um, I, I would go with the majority in that particular issue. And, uh, yeah, we need a, uh, we need a coalition. Just because... Between just maybe the, the, the Lib Dems and Labour? Is, is that the, the way Lib, it has? The Lib Dems and Labour and Green and the SNPs are a whole rainbow coalition. Oh. Why not? Well, well, Nick, my theory is, I, I, I completely understand the idea of representative representation, blah, 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 but I don't think you can claim that without the SNP, Conservatives would be a power as we are, let alone if they weren't, that Labour would be as they are. I think they're an incredibly important party, and they might or might not fall apart. I think... Okay. Well, I tell you what, I tell you what, George. I'm I'm sorry, but what is falling apart is your uh, phone line, and um, you you appear to e e either there's something wrong with your phone, or you're now underwater. Check to see whether you are still breathing. Uh, but um, I get the call, I hear the message. Thanks a lot, George. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Randall text the CDO stands for the Conservative Denial Operation in benefit to a very oversized, scruffy, lying scarecrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we... Who are you talking about? Roderick says, Nick, you are wrong about dogs being wild and dangerous. Dogs have been domesticated for 40,000 years, possibly more. There is nothing wild about dogs, no matter how big they are. A trained and well-loved dog is nothing to be afraid of. The humans are the problem. Ban some people from owning dogs. Do not ban the dogs. Oh, do me a favour. Some people should absolutely be banned from owning dogs. That seems undeniable. But a certain type of dog shouldn't be allowed to be owned by anybody. Those dogs that are just uh, that are like steroidal muscle with teeth, no one needs a dog like that. Ever. At all. It should not be allowed. Those dogs are bred for one purpose only. To scare the hell out of other gang, uh, other gang members. Don't tell me otherwise. Oh, well, they're lovely with kids, please. I've heard that so many times. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Nobody needs a dog like that. And if you're in, if in a built-up urban area, maybe you shouldn't be able to have a dog at all. I mean, apart from anything else, it's not very uh, kind to the dog, is it? I mean, a dog likes to run and 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 run. That's what a dog wants to do. It wants to get out there and run and run and run. It wants to chase squirrels or whatever else it is. What a dog doesn't want to do is spend all day long on its own in a flat while the owner goes out and works. And then when the owner comes back, it takes it for a desultory trudge around the block where it gets to poop on the pavement. That's not what a dog wants. That's a prison sentence for a dog. We're not a nation of uh, animal lovers. We're, we're a nation of uh, people who acquire a pet and then keep it a prisoner for our own amusement. That's what it is. As, uh, as sort of like a, a child substitute. That's not a controversial thing to say, is it? 0345 973 East Yorkshire. Hello, Mike. Hi, Nick. Yeah. Um, uh, conservative conferences, eh? Yeah. I'm like, buses, when you get one, you get two. Mm. We've had this one in Bournemouth, which I don't know whether you noticed, but they have the prices for the tickets in the last couple of days. <laughs> they obviously couldn't get either people to attend. Yeah. But on Monday, we've got the NATCOM. The National Conservative Conference starts in London on Monday. Right. Speakers... Braverman, Gove, Mogg, Bertie P. Lee, Frost, amongst others. Oh my God! Can you believe it? Well, but if if they all main, if they all uh, remain in the same building, then it'll make it easier for the rest of us to avoid them. Well, know where they it, are. This is true, but they've also um, published their schedule, right? Which includes British restoration. What does that mean? This is God knows. <laughs> this, this, this United Post Human Kingdom, 
why we can have nice things. <laughs> what? It, it, why we can have nice things. Why? Th this is... Wait a minute, wait a minute, back up. This is the... To hang on a minute, stop there. This is a topic of conversation. Why yeah, the, can't we have nice things? That, is that... Is no, that... why we can have nice things. Right. Okay. <laughs> Next one. It, it's detention for you, exclamation mark. Yes. <laughs> The the war against national belonging. What does that mean? I don't know. Does it mean um, nationalisation of stuff or... I don't know. The war against the national war belonging. Against nas oh, it, it sounds like one of these things, that, like the war against Christmas. Why can't you uh, left-wing activists leave Christmas alone? Is it like that kind of thing? It's the same as these uh, dinglings in um, America. I mean, it's all... <laughs> It's just all such nonsense. It's trying to trigger those who are of uh, limited intelligence to thinking, wow, they're the patriotic party, they are. I'm going to vote for them, regardless of what they've done to me the last 13 years. They've got flags. It's not cultural disarmament. <laughs> <laughs> the, cu the cultural impact of liberal capitalism. Liberal <laughs> capitalism. Right. I mean, it, it, it's it's just when you look at all down this lot, and then at the end, very very last one, thirty p leads one, restoring the realignment. What does that mean? I don't know. Right. From the red wall to conservatism. Well, is uh, is Jonathan Gullis <laughs> uh, speaking? Because I want to hear him uh, tell us uh, more about scumbags and scrotes. It's like end, end of an era. It must be. I mean, this is the last dying embers of, um, uh, of a, a really bad fire. So, somebody needs to put it out. <laughs> Call 999. What's the number for 999? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mike. 0345. 6060973, text 84850, email nick a at uk, And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Simon says, I was once bitten by a dog while out walking my ferret and I had to go to casualty. Ferret. Phil says, Fishy's birthday today. He's, he's 43. You're kidding. Forty-three? Forty-three going on ninety-three. Rhys Mogg told the Tory right-wing faithful today in Bournemouth they need to back him as they can't afford another change of leader. What a nice, nice birthday present, says Phil. Fishy Sunak is forty-three. Uh, Caroline says, My little dog got chased by scary pit bull once and the owner turned to me and said, Don't worry, love, he's all mouth. I said, Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> that's it it's, they're just a giant set of jaws on legs why would anybody in their right mind need a dog like that unless they were a drug dealer to scare other people using it as a weapon and if they imagine for a single solitary second that that dog will not bite their face off instead then um, they deserve everything they get should not be allowed. Um, Fred says, couple of bricks. <laughs> uh, that must be painful, but only if you catch your thumbs. <laughs> Prepare yourself, Bodger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we? This is LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Anybody care what this guy thinks? No! Howard texts, dogs are largely friendly animals. Uh, with exceptions, of course, but they are all quite filthy. They must be if the first thing that they do when they meet each other is to stick their noses <laughs> up each other's bottoms. Disgusting. Uh, no dog should sit on public seats that are meant for human beings. <coughs> correct Amundo, Howard. Totally correct in every respect. Uh, some people, uh, I've got a lot of um, texts and uh, tweets and such that uh, people want me to uh, play the tape. 
Do they know which tape I'm talking about? Or are they just a, a, any tape at random? I think any tape at random. Any, any tape at random. Leave it with me. I'll play the tape from you know who. <laughs> Jenny says, what is quite depressing, Nick, as someone who actually thinks themselves a pat patriot, i.e. loves the better parts of what being British is, is finding out that I am now seriously considering leaving this nation because I can't stand what this corrupt Tory cabal have reduced it to. Oh, no, I've finished that sentence too quick. Have reduced it and the people in it to, says Jenny. And Matt says, the Smug and Pretty and Nadine are in my hometown of Bournemouth this weekend at some <laughs> weird Tory event. For me, Jacob is a Dickensian character without the Enzian. <laughs> well, that's just rude. But you've got a good point. 0344. It's just such a risible act, this. Well, I don't know anything. Uh, no one speaks like that. The blooming Queen didn't use to speak. King Charles doesn't talk like that. All right, let's have um, one moment, please. Stanwell, Kelly. Oh, hello. Hi, how are you? Great, mate. Uh, it's the first time I've been on, so I'm very nervous. Oh, yes. But all I want to do is go back to the dog. Right. Um, and... With regards to dogs, it's about how they're brought up, the situation they're brought up in, and what they're presented with. So it can be, I, yeah. I mean that that helps if if you bring up a dog well and it's in a stable absolutely. household and the owner is not a nutter, then uh, yeah, it would um, it would benefit the dog. But they are animals. And at any moment, a little switch will go off in their tiny doggy brains, and they'll bite Thank your face you. off, Kelly. For sure, but mm. it's also about the environment that they're in. So yeah. dogs are brought into an environment to protect their situation. These animals that we're talking about uh, specifically, they were barking. They weren't doing anything. They weren't being aggressive. They weren't doing anything. They were barking. They weren't... Right, well, I don't know, I didn't see the video, I can't comment about that in specifics, but I do know that they're the kind of dog that no uh, ordinary member of the public should be allowed to own. Yes, but they they are dogs that are lovable dogs in the right Until, situation, but yeah. they are dogs that are associated with the wrong situation. Right. My little brother was attacked by Jack Russell. I was attacked by a poodle. Do you know, it's all about... It's how the breed is brought up in a situation. The difference between, the difference between those situations, Kelly, is that you could survive an attack by a poodle or a Jack Russell. You not, probably, not you so probably could way. not survive an attack by the kind of dogs that you were talking about. Uh, OK, I completely agree, but... At the end of the day, it's all about these are, you know, these are animals that have got in instincts that are protective instincts. They yes. are going to protect what they love. Right, and, Them, which is often themselves. I mean, owners think that they, they get a pass, but not necessarily so. No, not a pass. There are people that use them as uh, uh, you could almost no, by, say by as, pass as by pass what, what hang on a minute by pass what i mean is that the owners think that the dog is never going to attack them but it ain't necessarily so completely agree but they weren't attacking the police but they used okay right i've got as, i've got no as, idea about that specific um uh event that p particular instance, so I can't say one way or the other, but I do know I saw a, a picture of them on the seat in the tu on the tube, which should not be allowed. In fact, I don't think they should be allowed to be on the tube, full stop. Never mind about sitting on the seats. Don't impose your uh, vicious animal on the rest of us. And, um, uh, oh, did they? But anyway, uh, uh, Kelly, we're, we're never going to agree, so um, I, I wish you all, uh, all the best. Vicious animals should not be allowed as pets. That's just, that has to be um, incontrovertible. You can't argue around it, they just shouldn't be allowed. 
not in a built-up area. I mean, if you live on a farm, help yourself. If you live out in the middle of nowhere, if you live, live up a, uh, a, 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 a hill in uh, Wales where you can't see your neighbour, they're so far away, then that's just fine. Have as many of those uh, crazy animals as you like. They're not in the middle of London, not in the middle of any city or town. I mean, the amount of misery that dogs um, impose on people, they, and they don't even have to be living next door. With the constant barking and barking and barking and barking, they could live half a mile away and they can ruin your life. No, shouldn't be allowed in a, in a built-up area. They just shouldn't. Sweden won uh, Eurovision, by the way. Oh. Spoiler alert. Warning, warning. <laughs> Sweden. I mean, doesn't that tell you... I've got absolutely no idea what their uh, entry was like, but uh, it doesn't prevent me from having a strong opinion. Awful, I bet. <coughs> bet it was awful. What kind of song was it? I don't know. How no, we don't know. <laughs> Do we care? No. Not really. Where did we come? I will find out. We're going to find out right now. Did we come last? Because that is our usual position. I don't even know what our song was this year, and I'm not remotely interested. Please don't tell me anything about it. We're still looking. I'll wait. <laughs> we came where? 25th out of 26. <gasps> Who was 26th? Germany. Germany. Oh. No! Well, see, Germany. They don't really do um, uh, music. <laughs> I mean, they do classical music. Uh, other than that, not much. German music. I'm just trying to think of um, some... Well, there was the Scorpions. I think they were German. Um, Michael Schenker, out of the Scorpions. Uh, Kraftwerk, of course. Who else? German music. Um, that's it. David Bowie made music in Germany, so there's that. Rock and roll! <laughs> Other than that, can't think of anything at all. I mean, I was going to say Daft Punk, but they're French. German modern music. Nope, I am coming up empty. Chris says, if they want to reform something, how about the undemocratic public order bill which stifles protest or voter ID, which stops people voting instead, says Chris, who is uh, probably under arrest as I speak. Tooting. Hello, Jan. Hi, good evening, Nick. Jan. Yeah, so I had um, a point, a, a couple of points to say about dogs. Yeah. Um, because... Just, just, um, I, I don't, I, I don't know how people can ringing you up and saying that, um, so, you know, uh, uh, kind of dismissing the idea that there are actually, so, there's about five of the most dangerous dogs in the world, a list, you know, are, are known um, for, for, for historical reasons as well. You know, they were used in bear baiting and bullfighting. That's what they're um, for. They're for yeah, attacking. But Jack, but Jack Russell is one of them. Staffordshire Bull Terrier, Pitbulls, Rottweilers. Yeah. But the German Shepherd is in a funny position, but that's listed as five of the most dangerous dogs in the world. The German and, Shepherd? Yeah. I'm oh, right. Oh, okay. Right. Maybe right. that's the wrong list, but... But, but, but um, they are they are very aggressive dogs. They they they're bred to be aggressive. That's so, an Al a German Shepherd's an Alsatian, right? That's like yeah, yeah, yeah. More or less the same that thing. must be yeah. on the wrong. That should be on the list. Um, but um, what, what what's happened recently is that, and in my own experience as well, is that dogs that aren't usually known to be aggressive have suddenly turned aggressive and turned on people and bit them and even killed them recently. A woman yes. Was so, so that's really worrying. I mean, I was in a, I was in a furniture store recently upstairs in it, and there was a woman with a dog there, and the dog was getting like it was going to go for me. You know, I was really terrified. I thought um, even the manager in the store wouldn't be able to control it. The woman, the owner, could scarcely control it, and I I would have been stuck in a corner with this. Yes, wild dog. and you know what? The, and you know what the reason? 
morons. That's the reason. I think the dogs like they like to, they get under stress and they're they're they they're, they're not the normal usually aggressive dogs. But I've just found out that they're actually I'm going to get some. There's a spray that can be used that <laughs> dog trainers. No, that dog trainers and security guards use yeah. it when they when to you, stop dogs yeah, you, you, it. Ta- it smells horrible. You spray it on yourself and the dog runs away. No, you spray it on the dog. Oh, I see. Right, that makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a several. I've looked looking it up on Amazon, but I had a strange experience. This is a bit anecdotal. Can I say it? Have I got time to say it quickly? Uh, well, you've got one minute. If that's any yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I I thought this locally. I thought this woman was had a fox, one of those red foxes, on the lead in the street, and I was <laughs> I was actually intrigued because. I, I, I like foxes. Well, I like some of the ones I see. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. Them, but, but I found out it's... I thought... I actually even... I've never talked to a dog before. <laughs> I think these... It's, it's one of those Japanese dogs that look like a big fox, a Shibu Inu. A what, no? Very pretty looking, pretty looking dogs. I was intrigued that this woman had a fox on a lead right. in the high street. Yeah, so you... you- <laughs> You've never talked to a dog before. Okay, well, let, well, let, let me ask you this. It was let, very friendly. It was hang on a minute. Friendly. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. <laughs> let me ask you this. I said to the owner, I've never talked to a dog before. But yeah, and, and so let me ask you this. I thought it was a fox. Has the dog ever talked to you? Yes, it was. It was wagging its tail in I, its own language. Oh, okay. That's just... <laughs> that's enough information. So you talk to the dog, and the dog talked back. I get it. That's what I would have expected. Thanks, Jan. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. It's 12.30 on LBC. The news headlines with Tim Daly. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Don't touch me. You. David said it was interesting to see Fishy Sunak at Southampton today to see his supposedly beloved football team relegated. He should have given him some experience of how it will feel when his beloved Conservative Party are hopefully relegated to the opposition benches. Fishy <laughs> Sunak was, was in Southampton pretending to like football. Why? That's really bizarre. I mean, Southampton were going to go down anyway, regardless. Why would he associate himself uh, with them? M- a message coming in from next door. He is actually a football fan. Do you believe that? I, I know this to be true, actually. I've got a friend who is a Southampton fan, and he is a regular attendee. Is um, he really? He is. He's right. one of the few um, politicians that actually does like football. What does he wear when he goes? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the uh, not the standard kit, I bet. I bet the nylon has never touched his body. Full kit with socks. <laughs> I seriously doubt that. Full kit with socks. No. Tom says, no connoisseur of music would watch or go anywhere near Eurovision. I'm not sure what that Malcolm in Bodlin, Bodmin has been drinking. Booze. I expect. Uh, Jim says, did you see uh, Statmer's, Statmer's, Starmer's pro- proclamation today? Seriously, our nation is hopeless. Starmer said, Labour are the real Conservatives. I <laughs> I don't think he said that, did he? I don't think he said that. Um, hang on a minute. Starmer promised a, uh, a a Labour government led by him will be like Blairism on steroids, vowing radical change in a speech. Um, the Labour leader said the task facing the party was difficult and enormous. He said that plans for the party were far greater than when Blair rewrote Clause 4 of uh, Labour's constitution. Blah, 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 said, uh, I don't think he said that uh, the two true Tory. I mean, he kind of acts like they are. The Tory party now seem to be the um, the true, true like, um, continuity UKIP. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm not sure that uh, he would actually say that out loud. Labour are the real Conservatives. He promised to protect our way of life, says Jim, the Labour leader will argue against redistribution alone, promising to change his party's DNA like Tony Blair on steroids. He did say that bit. Against redistribution of what? The nation's wealth? We got no end of money in this country. 
Yeah. It's just it's in too few people's hands. That's all. If we spread it about a bit, better. But, uh, you know, that's uh, socialism. We don't want that. No! <laughs> yeah. Ealing. Hello, Stuart. Hey, Nick. Stuart. Uh, yeah, it'd be good to kind of, like, continue uh, running the government down. I, I love doing that. Uh, it's not hard to do. But I wanted to talk about dogs today because it seems uh, that we're talking about dogs. Um, and uh, I go on some long walks. I lost my dad last year, and just to clear my head, and in, near, near where I live in Perivale, there's lots of open fields. And uh, last week, uh, early part of last week, I was attacked twice in one day. Uh, once, um, <laughs> it, was, it was really horrible. Um, I wear a cap, um, and uh, this dog kind of, I could tell that it was going to go for me, and I and I, I told the, the owner. And by the way, the owners, you can kind of describe these people, but I won't. Okay, mouth um, mouth breathing, knuckle dragging morons. Well, I first, but yeah. So I said, look, keep it. Could you put it on the leash, um, on the lead? Um, and this guy said, um, no, we're in a field. And you know what? I look. I looked at him, and as soon as I looked at the owner, the dog just flew at my leg and was hacking away at my leg, um, and uh, I was screaming like a baby. And I, I absolutely love animals, but, you know, these dogs, um, uh, you know, it, the term is, you know, they're bred for it, but, you know, it's absolutely true that some of these dogs, um, they, they are genetically um, kind of predisposed to, uh, to act the way they do. Um, and uh, to tell you the truth... So I, 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 that happened to me, and I was screaming like a baby, and I, you know, I looked at my leg, and it had, it had drawn blood. Um, and uh, and I, anyway, I went, I went on my way. And in the next field, would you believe, the next big field, uh, this other da dog, uh, a pit bull this time, uh, the, the first dog was a, a Rottweiler, um, and th this other dog, I, I climbed up a tree, Nick, and it was going for my ass, my 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 leg again, um, and I just thought, what the hell? So I went home and um, I googled um, what to do. Yeah. Um, you know, if if this kind of stuff happens, and right. the thing don't, don't, don't carry do, sausages in your back pocket. You don't look at it, okay? You don't you don't you don't look or give eye contact to a dog like that. The second thing is you don't show teeth, and <laughs> the other thing is you, you're supposed to look away, and you never ever um you, you would try not to um to be toppled over because as soon as you go you, you know you fall on the ground mm. they instinctively like like your prey they go for your neck right so they so the, the i mean it, it, uh, and i'm not normally afraid of dogs but you know what i, I, I you know, that that lady that, that, that phoned in jan I, I think that i should i should probably carry something like that with me but these dogs if they did take you t down to the ground, I don't think you'd have a chance. Because no, that would so, be it. Game over. Yeah. They're so mu Nick, they're so muscular. Uh, yeah, well, that's what they're bred for. They're, it's like um, they're, they're just jaws on um, steroids. That It's essentially what they are. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks for the bad news, Stuart. 0345 6060 Sue emails, do you think that uh, Fishy has finally twigged that leaving the EU was a very bad idea? And the only way we are able to resuscitate our economy will be to rejoin the EU. So it would be a complete waste of time repealing all of those EU laws, only then having to reinstate them. Of course, I could be talking through my hat, <laughs> but not for the first time, says Sue. I think that's the other reason. I think that um, people who are most uh, vociferous about uh, getting rid of these EU laws aren't really interested in all of them. By subterfuge, they just want to get rid of one or two that are an impediment to their further enrichment. But by cloaking those one or two laws in, a, in hundreds, if not thousands of other laws, then they won't um, uh, play their hand. They won't uh, like show their hand. They can get what they want without it appearing as though that's what they want. It's a cloaking mechanism just to get rid of all of them because if they said, well, we want to get rid of the, the laws that, uh, I don't know, that, that prevent, um, uh, that, that prevent uh, hedge funds from dodging all taxes, for instance. I mean, I'm just making this up. There will be specific laws that to pertain to specific uh, ministers uh, whose uh, portfolio 
includes a business that would be um, more profitable if they didn't have to um, abide by some pesky EU regulations. But you don't want to tell the public that because they'll think, well, hang on a minute, we quite like those regulations of, uh, you know, not being poisoned to death, for instance, or not being um, abused by some multinational uh, corporation in some way. So they don't want to tell us that that's what they're doing, but, you know, by uh, by covering their tracks, that is what they, that, that's what they'll get. They, they don't care about any of the other laws, not remotely interested. Um... There was uh, another side to... Uh, uh, oh, well... Yeah, I, I can't remember what... Did you delete the thing that I just read? I think you you get rid of them just a bit too quick. Put it put that one back that I was just reading, if, um, if indeed that was what I was just doing. Right, here we go. It would be a complete waste of time repealing all of those EU laws, only having to reinstate them. Well, well that's the other thing, is um, they, they want to make it as difficult as possible for a future government to contemplate going back into the European Union. I and mean, if we get rid of every law, then imagine how long it would have to be to um, reinstate them. Because each one would have to be, you know, looked at in detail. Because the ones, the people that are trying to get past Parliament and get this done just by, um, you know, by, by a sort of a dictatorial swipe of the pen, they will be very keen to observe all protocol when it comes to putting any of those rules back. They will become sticklers for um, parliamentary protocol the, uh, the moment it doesn't suit them, because that's exactly who they are. 03456060973. Um, let's have, let's see, I'm waiting the longest. Aberdeen, Dave. Hello, mate. Yes, Dave. Yeah, listen, Nick, nice to talk to you. Uh, just had a, a couple of crackers here. Walked into the pub, mate. Unbelievable to me, this dog has made a mess in the middle of the floor. And I stood in it. Oh, no, somersaults right across. Oh, I thought, no, so I went and sat down, tried to clear myself up. A couple of minutes later, this boy walks in the door behind me. Did he know did the same thing? He stood in his dog and he did the same thing. He somersaulted, and I burst out laughing. He's, he said, what are you laughing at? Uh, yeah, ha hang, hang on a minute, Dave. Are you saying that you somersaulted? Well, I slipped right on me. <laughs> anyway, he did the same thing. He says, and I burst out laughing. He said, what are you laughing at? I said, I just did that. He, he... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know where that's going. Thanks a lot, Dave. We don't do jokes. I just did that. <laughs> nope. Not on this show. Uh, Lee says, It's a lifesaver hearing you and O'Brien uh, taking on the corrupted cabal in power. How long do you think it will be before we hear the door to your studio being kicked in and the airwaves going dead and you're hoiked off the air for re-education? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's funny, but it's not funny. This says, you're right about Cruella Braveman. Chris says, uh, uh, you're right about Cruella Braveman and how the people of Fairham elector is baffling and can they please stop? Proportional representation would end these Tory MP and council thiefdoms, he says. We have to have it. Keir Starmer needs to do it on day one assuming that he is the next Prime Minister of this country. And if he doesn't do it on day one, he should be fired on day two. But that's the problem with uh, a person who is um, uh, seeking power. They think that when they acquire it, it will always be theirs. No. No, it won't. Here's how it's going to go. I would expect that the uh, Labour Party will win the next general election, or they will be able to form the next government. The Conservative Party will turn on a sixpence and blame the new government for everything that they have done, the Tories have done, for the last 13 years. 14, as it will be. Absolutely everything that is wrong with the country that has been their doing over the last 14 years, will now they will now blame the new government for, the Labour Party. It's their fault. And just enough people will think, yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> Ever since this lot came in yesterday, this country's been ruined. So they'll vote for the Conservatives the following time. Keir Starmer, you're going to get one term. One. And then the Tories will be right back in. So use it well, and proportional representation might change this country for the better. Forever. 0345 John says, do you know if Charlie Boy sent the Pope his... <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. I'll, I'll read this through before reading it to you. John says, do you know if Charlie Boy sent the Pope his Jesus splinters back? Or did he keep them? Do you think he gave the Pope something in return, like swapses? If so, what do you think he might have traded? Well, I mean, for some people, there's, uh, th there's no greater treasure on earth than the splinters that were supposedly from the cross that Jesus died on. And that was um, set in behind glass in a thing that I've got no idea. Anyway, interesting um, idea, John. What what would you give back? Joe says, I mean, maybe like one of them sparklers. Just pull one of them sparklers out of his um, spangly hat and uh, give him one of them. I mean, you, you, you don't um, uh, lack them. you got enough. Joe says, we now know our decline is not the result of various minorities, whether civil servants, home workers, refugees, judges, even those of us that thought that leaving the EU would be a disaster, but is entirely due to a sustained series of bad decisions for ourselves and our country made by politicians who do not personally suffer from the consequences of their actions or questionable ambitions. What do you think, Liz? Absolutely. It's a yes from her. 0345 6060 973, Nick Abbott, LBC. <laughs> Coming up at one on LBC, Clive Bull. Reports this morning suggest Labour could give the vote to settled EU migrants and 16 and 17 year olds. Is that a move you'd support? Clive Bull on LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. So what we do? We are still doing a radio show, Given. 0345 6060 973. Olivia says, have you ever heard of Rammstein, the biggest band in Europe today, says Olivia. And she's got that wrong. I've heard of Rammstein, but I've never heard their oeuvre. Rock and roll! And nor do I wish to. Rona says, we've just finished watching Eurovision. My husband didn't get wrecked after all. <laughs> Spoiler alert, Sweden won, Germany didn't. Ironically, the German band was Lords of the Lost. Don't look at pictures of them, just don't, says Rona. Well, I can't, uh, I can't resist that. Lords of the Lost. Looking that up straight away. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. It's worse than I expected. <laughs> And they didn't win, you say? Gosh, I find that unsurprising. It looks like... It looks like the Rocky Horror Picture Show got caught in an explosion in a paint factory. Null 
point from me. Uh, Wembley. Hello, Christoph. Oh, hi there, Nick. Christoph. Uh, so, do you feel I can speak with some authority about the reported uh, dog incident? Because, well, to be frank, I know hardly anything about it. Right. Doesn't prevent you from having a strong opinion. Well, indeed. And, and uh, from what I heard, I mean, you have so many people phoning in who sort of uh, saying, oh, the, the dogs did this and dogs did that, but surely the, the primary responsibility of the police is the safety of the public. Yeah. And if, if, if any of those dogs had bitten anybody, including the owner, that would be it. I mean, the police would have been in so much more trouble. Yeah. Don't well, you? I don't really want to talk about that particular issue because I don't didn't you? see I didn't see the video and I you know I'm just not uh, I'm not yeah. uh, I don't have the information oh. at my fingertips. Sure. But that kind of they... dog should not be allowed to be owned by a person from the general public just shouldn't. Oh, uh, yeah, well, there there you go. Um and uh, what's that new bit of the Tory party called that new faction? Do you do it's the oh, Democratic the con Conservative yeah. Conservatives for Democracy or something? <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that, is that yeah. Right? I mean, that's, like that. uh, they're just trolling well, us, aren't they? They're just, they I, really are trolling us. So, um... Because that's, the that's what they're most concerned you, about, democracy. If you include the words of democratic in your name, well, I think you should be immediately suspicious because, um... Highly. I just offer you two... Uh, I just offer you two examples. Do you remember East Germany? Yes. Yeah, I don't know how many phone answers you've got, but the one I spoke to said he was born in 1996, which is about six years after the end of East Germany. Yeah. But, of course, East Germany used to call itself the GDR, the German Democratic Republic. But well, DDR, yeah. A DDR, uh, Deutsche... Well, that, 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 mm. oh, that was that. Deutsche Dem yeah. Democratic, yeah. yeah. That, um, but... Uh, yeah, G in English. Um, and, of course, we've, we've got the DPRK. Right. Which is the <laughs> Democratic People's Republic of Korea, which is yeah. not South Korea. Right, which is where we're going. I mean, not uh, oh, yeah, not to that area on the map, but to, uh, you know, that, that general uh, political end point. I, I think that that's where they're ushering us. Yes, but from the other side kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't matter which side you come from, as, lo uh, you know, as long as you get there eventually. And that's not not a place that any of us want to go. But there's uh, certain things that have happened in this country just lately that wouldn't look out of place in North Korea. I mean, like banning protests, for instance. Yes, yes. Couldn't agree with you more. Right. I want you to go outside with a blank piece of paper, Christoph, stand on the corner of your street and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and make your first call from jail to me. All right. Thanks a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Perry says, I did not watch the Eurovision Song Contest. However, as the Princess of Wales played the piano, we should have pretended that she was our entrant. Hey, we missed a trick there. The blessed, um, uh, what's it? Out of Wills and what's it? Oh. Isn't she an absolute dream? Christine says, the best rock song was from Steppenwolf. The best rock song was from Steppenwolf, Born to be Wild. And don't forget Boney M. Oh, you're talking about German uh, rock songs. Steppenwolf. Was Steppenwolf German? Is that true? Um, Boney M were, uh, yeah, they were Germanish, yeah. Uh, Martin says, I too have a problem, neighbour, with a barking dog. They have zero consideration for people. You, have to, you, you should uh, listen to their stupid dog. Or you, you have to listen to their stupid dog, he says. Uh, yeah. That is a big problem. People should not be allowed to have dogs that are A, dangerous, and B, loud. <laughs> that's, just, uh, that's just a fact. Um, uh, information from next door. Steppenwolf are Canadian. Well... Can you be Canadian and German at the same time? Marion says, I have a toy poodle, my first dog. What I have learned is that some owners are completely nuts and off the reservation, if you get my drift, and their personality then unfortunately is expressed in bad dog behaviour. While most owners are responsible, I do think that there should be an application process to own a dog, as some owners are simply not competent. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, there should be an application process to um, vote 
and there should be an application process to uh, recreate, reproduce. I'm sure that's not a controversial thought, is it? Jack says, enough dog chat. I made friends with a white cat called Belinda at Tesco's in Sunbury on Thames. It lies about on car bonnets and makes a beeline for you if you have food. Now that it looks hard done, now, not that it looks hard done by, but I nearly went back in to buy it some dreamies. <laughs> I've got no idea what a dreamy is. <laughs> but, uh, just as a bonus, I'm going to play the tape. Hey, by the way, if um, you missed any part of this show, then you can listen back on uh, Global Player. We take the news and the ads out. It takes less time to listen to. Uh, you'll use less electricity. And with the money you save, you'll be able to buy uh, tickets for that uh, conservative uh, gathering of uh, dinglings, their dinner and dance. Buy one, get ten free. They can't give them away. Um, but, uh, you know what, I've actually just run out of time. I was going to play the uh, Nigel Farage tape. Remind me next week, and I'll do it then. As a special bonus, you know, for good behaviour. Now then, um, as I just explained, this show is available on the internet. Now, I know that last night's was screwed up, but I am uh, assured that tonight's won't be. Nick Abbott, the whole show podcast. That's the uh, thing to say to your stupid smart speaker. If you've got Global Player, you'll find it on that and only on that. Nick Abbott, the whole show podcast. If you haven't got Global Player, download it for free from your app store or head to globalplayer.com. I'm back, com. 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 I'm back, com.